This is Mary at the Marriott TA, and it's Sunday evening, May 16th, and let's do some art. Welcome to my desk. Welcome to my desk. Let me set up. Hi, Clint. Welcome, welcome. Clint, you can say first. <laughs> first. <laughs> Welcome, Clint. Good to see you. So, I have some things I want to get done tonight. Of course, Penelope's here. I've been making progress on crocheting around my picture here. I just have one side left to do. It takes a little, a little bit of time, but I'm really happy with it, how it's coming out. I work on that while I'm listening to videos. And I found my holly candle. Actually, I rescued it. <laughs> my holly candle. Holly doesn't want me to set my desk on fire anymore, so she sent me a, can a candle. An uh, artificial candle. But I like it. And these are some of the photos that I did in the Time for Art Fibers and Fabric. I'm really happy with those. I'm not quite sure what journal I'm going to put those in. Hi, patio. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to my mess, Clint says. <laughs> That's about it, huh? Uh, hi, Julie. Welcome. Hi, Rhonda. Hi, Kathy Whitney and Angie. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So what I want to work in tonight is my trash and ichi. Yeah, we're going to work in this tonight. I have some things I want to put in here yet. And, bless her heart, Dee Dee. Dee Dee sent the paper for the wraparound. So we're going to work on that. Actually, she sent me two. One of these is going to go for my, I'm going to cut it into strips for my two-dimensional shadow boxes. <laughs> my head just went blank. So I'm back down to the bottom, Clint. <laughs> and as I was sorting through some of my stuff today, I ran across this Rolodex that Annie V had sent me. So we might do some things with the Rolodex. I've got a few things done in here. Plethora. And there's a couple of Tim Holtz pictures and some Monopoly money. I guess I just have three. But we might do something with that tonight. And I have Becky's card. And the laminating pouches. I've got some things I need to put in my art journal. Yeah. Just kind of sorting it all out here. Can't find space for it all. Hi, Mina. Hi, Marjorie. Welcome, welcome. Hi, Ruth. Welcome, welcome. Hey, Clint says, I know, right, Mary? <laughs> It's really cold where you are, Julie. We've had a really cool spring. We had rain last night, so I didn't work in the yard today. Uh, but it's been cool. We've had a, a, a late spring, uh, a cool spring. So what I want to do here, let me get it out. I got that. Let me put this over on the other side. Oh, and I want to work in my put together the pages for my June art journal. We'll get to that later. Sydney, Australia. Is it cold in Australia? <laughs> um, but you're on the other side of the world, so it's winter and fall there, isn't it? I got some happy mail to open. Let's open the happy mail first. Let's open the happy mail. I have no idea who this is from. Um, I thought it might be Aunt, from Annie V, but she said no. She said what I sent you isn't isn't going to come for a couple weeks yet. So, all right. So let's see who this happy mail is from. 
Let's check it out here. Happy mail time. Oh, oh. Well, this is interesting because this I can't show you yet. <laughs> Sorry. Can't show you. Can't show you yet. You'll just have to wait for another day. This is this is for another project. This is for another project. We'll put that aside. I'm holding you in suspense. <laughs> oh. Hi, Brittany. Brittany said it's been unusually cool here, too, in Ohio. But finally had a nice weekend this week. Was supposed to warm up nice and sunny. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. I hope it does here, too, because we got most of our garden in. I'm still putting flowers in. Uh, yesterday, I put in the marigolds around the curve. In fact, I was thinking that I would do a, a border doodle here of marigolds. Little doodle book here that I've been working in. Let's just do some marigolds. Let me zoom in. Let me zoom in and I'll draw some marigolds borders here. Let me zoom in. Mm. Right about there, maybe. All right. Sorry about the wiggly camera. Marigolds. Oh, I took my other pen out in the... No, I didn't. I put it in here. I need to work on my list for Dee Dee. Ooh, I think it's due tomorrow. I knocked my ladies off on the floor here. Let's pick them up. We'll put my trash and Ichi on the floor. Uh, I'm working on Society by Deal Collector lists. Of course, I probably won't be in there tomorrow morning. I'll probably sleep late. Oh, well, I have that out. Let me pull this out. We're going to we're going to disassemble this cookbook. But let's draw the marigolds here first. Marigolds. So they kind of well, the ones I have are really they've got a big head on them. The ones I have are kind of like that. And then they've got these kind of spiky leaves. Something like that. Now that almost looks like a dandelion, but it is a marigold. Nope. Marigolds. Gotta have marigolds. And I planted all around the curve and it must be i'll bet i have close to maybe 25 plants going around that curve on the outside of marigolds i alternated uh dark yellow ones with light yellow ones and our hollyhocks are coming up and i need to put in some hostas but after doing those marigolds and yeah, my brother hooked up the hose for me, but we wind it into this holder, kind of, this kind of a square holder, and I had to unwind it. It was all twisted up in there, and boy, I'll tell you, that took the juice out of me before I even got started planning. <sighs> so I still have a few things I want to do out around the curve as far as planting, and then I'm going to mulch in between everything. I bought all that mulch. But, you know, our, our lilies are coming up. But our, our garden... Now, I did check, though. I think it was May 3rd when we planted. And I was expecting some of my zinnias and, and marigolds and some of the other flowers I planted to start peeking their heads through. But May 3rd is only... What is today? The the 16th. So it's only been, what, about 13 days. They should start peeking through pretty soon here.
they should start peeking through pretty soon. But we've had a late spring. Some of my old tulips that I got, that I got for 75% off, and they were telling me that they weren't going to come up. Well, some of them are coming up. They may not bloom, but some of my late tulips are coming up. It thinks it's still spring cool weather here. Hi, Lori. Welcome, Lori. Ah, uh, pretty. Yeah, kind of. It looks, I have to tell you, after you rake all the, I, I, did, I just let the leaves accumulate in that spot. Um, Brittany, under, it's underneath our black walnut tree. And the black walnut tree is on the corner curve. And um, I didn't rake it all up last fall. So I had to rake it all up. I got six or seven 13 gallon trash bags out of it. And I did that a couple weeks ago, several weeks ago. So it's been, after you get that done, it, it looks a lot neater. Okay, there are the merry goats. Now let's let's get out some of Becky's. Becky sent me some. What did I do with those? Becky sent me some of those super tips. Come on, Mary. What'd you do with them? <laughs> I saw them here. What'd I do with them? I hate it when I can't find things. We might have to do that later. I don't know what I did with the super tips. <sighs> oh, wait, let me switch around here. I'm looking for them. Grr. How can I have things in my hands one minute and go in the next? Well, here they are. They're on my, they're on my waste basket. <laughs> they're on my waste basket. Becky sent me this Crayola box of super tip markers. Really cool. And let's do some, they're all separate colors. They say there's no duplicates in here, so I'm really liking that. Maybe a dark green, a gold, and I like this light blue. We'll try that. Um, we'll see how that works. Kathy said she's sketching in her little sketchbook Allie Marigolds, since she just planted a bunch of them. Is Allie in here? Hi, Allie Kay. Hi, Angie. Mary, going to look for deer. Going to look for deer? <laughs> Are you going to look for deer? Is that what you mean? So let's just, let's put some, maybe I'll get out a yellow and accent this. Let's just put some gold marks in here and then I'll get out a yellow I don't want too much yellow because I'm going to put a blue sky and my my sky will turn green <laughs> God's green sky we'll have green for the that's almost a sea green uh, no that's the blue what did I get out here is that the dark green? Yeah. And we'll do a light green in there too. Mary, Mary, is that green? You go, that's pink. How, what made me, I've got pink marigolds. Um, my lighting's not very good in here. I've got pink gold marigolds. I'll have to put some yellow in there. I guess if you want to be creative, you can have pink marigolds. <laughs> Let's just soak mine out in the yard. Don't turn pink on me. That sure looked gold to me in the box. It doesn't look gold now that I have it on paper. Oh, well, where's the K? 
cap here. That looked gold. I don't know why that looked gold to me. Ah. Where's my box again? Well, let's see if we can do actually hide some of that pink. That's not too bad. That gold over it kind of makes it look brown ish. And let's take some of this lighter yellow. Let's take some of the lighter yellow and go around them. Mary, 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 pink marigolds. <laughs> Becky said my favorite color is pink. I guess I proved her right there. Okay, and we want a light green. Mm -hmm. Light, light green. Maybe like this. And I'm not trying to color in the lines. I'm just putting color on the page. Mary goes. And maybe what I'll do since I have so successfully turned my marigolds pink, is put a a yellow background instead of a blue sky. These colors are nice and juicy, and they want to blend, so you have to be kind of careful. Let's see if I can get more of an orangey color. You have to be sure that you get those caps on there really good. Let's see if I can't turn these a little more orangey. There. There we go. Now we're getting rid of the pink. We're making them orange. And marigolds are, some of them can be very orange. And the ones I have are big, round, and puffy. They aren't the, they aren't the, the, oh, the leafy kind, if you want to call it that. And let's take some of that's kind of a bluish. Let's I saw green down in here. There we go. I'm pretty happy with that. Thank you, Becky, for the super tips. I'm really enjoying these. I needed a new set, and Becky just ordered them right up for me. Bless her heart. All right, I'm going to put Marigold border here. M-A-R-I-G-O-L-D-S. And this is 5, what? 516 already. 
Wow. So there we go. Whoops. There we go. So what do I have in my border book here? I have stick figures. <laughs> Drippy splatter. Paisley. I'm going to color these, but not tonight. Teacups. I put Penelope on a teacup there. Eyeglasses. Paper dolls. Balloons. Hot air balloons. And now, marigolds. Woohoo! Surprise project in the future. What? Brittany says, uh, let's see. What did Kathy say? Surprise project in the future. Marjorie says, happy Sunday, everybody. Mina says, yay, Mary. Kathy says, had to see what you were doing before I have to start dinner. Yeah, um, I understand that, Kathy. Uh, seems like on the east, the further west you go, I know I always... I always miss uh, the first part of Lisa and, well, Becky and Beth because they always come on right at my dinner time. And I have to choose between my brothers calling me to supper and, let's see if I can fix this, and uh, streaming or watching streams. And I figure that since he cooks it, I better go eat it. But he knows, he knew I was coming on tonight. I usually tell him when I'm going to stream. I want to turn this under here. There. There we go. I should, I should paint this out. Maybe I will. Let's paint this out. Ah, let's see piece of scrap paper. This was, I cut this, I was going to make a flip book out of this, but the paper, the mixed media paper is way too thick. Shall we do it? Well, we, we need to have a good base coat. Uh, let's paint it. Oh. Let me look. I grabbed the yellow, but yellow isn't going to do it. Let's let's paint it this royal blue. Bright blue. Ooh, that's a lot. I'm going to smear it with my finger. That is a lot. Let's smear this too. I might have to come in and later and get in between the and I have more left on my finger. Oops. All right, let's just take this and put it over to the side to dry. If I don't drop it, I'm good for dropping things. Ew! Ew! That's what you get for not using a paintbrush, Mary. Okay. Now that gave me pretty good coverage, didn't it? Let me... Let me wash my hands. And I got out a new set of paper towels, but... 
they rolled away. <laughs> they rolled away. Now oh, they're behind me someplace. Boy, that blue wants to stain. Boy, that's really a, a bright blue, isn't it? Man. Yep. Let me zoom out. It's not going to all come off my hands until later. Until I wash it with some good old lava soap. All right. Let me get up and zoom out. Hold the phone here. Oh, let's see what's going on in chat. Julie says they're going into winter over on the other side of the world. Mina lives in Arizona. <laughs> Mina's not cold. Hi, Karen. Karen K. Welcome, welcome. I haven't seen you for a long time. Welcome, welcome. Somebody show... Somebody shall make paper towel ro rows that are square. Oh, really? Somebody showed make paper towel rows that are square. Lori says, hi, pomegranate. Pomegranate Janet. <laughs> hi, Janet. Welcome, welcome. Janet says, hi, Lori. What else is going on in chat? Big round puffy. Yeah, marigolds. The big round puffy marigolds. Those are my favorite, too. Let me have a sip of tea. We had Brett's tonight for supper. <laughs> Brett's sausages. So, let's... Let's disassemble this book. And I took the cover off of this. I'm going to put Penelope out of the way here. She says, where are you going to put me, Mary? <laughs> I'll find a spot someplace. I showed this book in my thrift haul the other night. But I opened it up and look at this cover. Isn't that a wonderful cover? Look at that. So I'm going to disassemble this book and take these pages out and make a journal out of a journal cover out of this. This is just beautiful. I like this the way it is. So I I bought it for the recipe, the pages, the recipe pages. Then I'm going to collage down on my trash and Ichi. Mary. You like to destroy books? <laughs> Let me tell you, these books would probably sit on the shelf for a long, long time. They might, this one though might have gotten picked up eventually because it's it's pretty interesting little book, cook for a cookbook, for a recipe book. It's, uh, she's got little stories and poetry mixed in with her, um, recipes and this book is by if you're interested jane watson hopping h-o-p-p-i-n-g the pioneer lady the country mother's cookbook and uh i think it's 1991 by random house so it's what 91 2001 2011 it's 30 years old 30 years old? Sheesh. It's not just a a new book. It's a it's been around. It's a middle-aged book. Let's see if I can get this out without destroying the spine. Notice my fingers are out of the way. Keep your fingers out of the way. 
when you do this type of thing. There we go. And I love this cover. This is going to become an art journal. Yep. I'll save that for later. But what I want in here, what I want to do, where's my trash Nietzsche? What I want to do is collage some of these recipes on these pages. Like in here. Well, this is in here. And, you know, on some of the blank. So, um, and I might do some of the stories, but before I do that, what did I do with these? I got to get out the wood here. We want to, we're going to put some of those recipes. I'm going to measure a, a wrap around for this trashinichi and it's going to become a wrap around like and I don't want to completely cover up the the picture here so I will probably put it here and it will probably be collaged up so I want it like so and it, it will grow fat so I'm going to now well, I might have to cut it down a little right now I'm going to fold it so Let's just measure the length. I think I told Dee Dee it was 11. 10 and... Let's measure it again. Bless her heart. She said, Mary, you don't need to... She said, I've got plenty of peel and stick wallpaper. 10 and a fourth. So I want to cut this at 10 and a fourth. And I'm going to do it on my... Hopefully my trimmer will cut it. And I want to cut it this way <laughs> look at this i'm so good i don't know where i get my talent from <laughs> mm. let's put my knife away Okay, so let's see what I have here. I'll move my tea for a minute, which means I have to move the stapler. <laughs> All right, so I want 10 and a fourth, and this is a nice straight edge here, so I'm going to cut it. I want to cut it this way. Because I'll be putting it in like this. And I'm just going to fold this. Like this. And hope that it'll cut the double cut. Well. Where was the nice straight edge? No. I want it to go this way. Hmm. Let's try it here first. Let's just even this out. And I'll use this as washi or, oh yeah, it's cutting nice. It's cutting nice. I'll use it maybe on that Rolodex scrap. So now I want to cut it at 10 and a fourth. I need to fold it this way. And we need 10 and a fourth. I don't know where Mary gets her talent. <laughs> I'm saying that. All right, 10 and 1 fourth, right in there. And 
and hopefully this is straight straight enough straight enough so I have this left over woohoo maybe we'll put it in there someplace and then this will be my wrap around and let's straighten this out just a teeny bit I think this side's pretty straight. This side needs a little straightening. There we go. Okay. So, now I want to take some of those cookbook pages and just put them down on here. So, let's choose some pages out of here. I can find what I did with the cookbook pages. Where did I put them? They're here. So this will come on the outside, and the cookbook pages will be on the inside. And this will be the wrap around here, like that. Very cool. So, <sighs> sweetened whipped cream, chocolate angel food cake. Mama Lowry's Old Fashioned Tea Biscuit. Oh, we can't. Ow. See, nice things like that. Uh, that'll go someplace. I don't know if it'll go in here. We'll see. I think she's got a forward and an introduction here. The home at peace. And these are all the... Oh, all of her chapters are handwritten. Not handwritten, but in te uh, handwriting text. Italic text. That's cool. Oh, I like how she's done her contents. And look at this picture. Isn't this cool? This is a pretty neat book. So, um, Dutch Dumplings, Magic Lace, and Gossamer. And pigs, chicken and rice pie. Let's split this if I can. Oh, let's. Can I split this? I might need to get my. Okay, these are ones I'm going to use here. These are ones I'm saving out. Wild mint tea. And I'm going to see if I can split it. I'm going to have to get my knife out. I don't want to cut my paper off. I don't need that. This is a well-made book. Well-made book. She says, of course, it came from me. And they always, there's a name for this little cloth piece in book binding. There's a name for that. I forget what it is, but there's a special name for that little piece that goes right at the top. We're going to give that to Penelope. She can keep on, hold on to this for me, would you, Penelope? All right, I was after wild mint tea. And what else is in here? Oh, churning instructions. Anne Irene's fresh strawberry sherbet with almond cluster cookies. I've got an Aunt Irene. Let's pull that out. I've got an Aunt Irene. She's passed away. She was my mother's oldest sister. She was one of my favorite. I liked all my aunts on my mother's side. Oh, I tore the whole thing. Hopefully not too bad. My mother's sisters, I liked all my aunts. I didn't know some of them very well. 
the three or four of them I got to know pretty good. And I'm going to be tearing these anyway, so strawberry preserves. All right. Effie's easy to make strawberry rolls. Boy, I really did it there. But fortunately, I'm going to tear this book all up anyway. Ah, Parsley and lemon butter. Mmm. Mashed potato meringue. Must be for like a mashed potato topping on a casserole. Soft molasses hermits. Dill butter. Dill butter sounds pretty good to me. I like I like dill. Let's see if I'd be more patient, I wouldn't have this problem. But no. Where's the dill butter? It's over here. Some poetry. Aunt Mabel's brown stew. Old fashioned collops. Mother's Day picnic. Must be a little story. Out fishing. The embarrassment of carp. This reminds me of my brother fishing. <laughs> it looks like him too. I'll have to show that picture to him. I said, this is how you look. Only he's sitting on a tree stump. My brother sits on a, a five-gallon bucket that's been turned upside down. Deviled salmon with medium white sauce and mashed potato meringue. Medium white sauce and mashed potato meringue. Parsley and lemon butter. Mother's Day. Our mother taught us many things by example, it says. See, she mixes all these cool pictures in with her recipes. Knee deep in June. Knee deep in June. Her smile of clear and voice of love. Little darling cookies. Strawberry shortcake. Let's pick out this strawberry shortcake. I have to have several because that's that wraparound. I'm going to put it on that wraparound. So uh, let's see. <sighs> Aunt F Fanny's four cup pudding, lemon cornstarch pudding. We used to make lemon pie and use cornstarch. I'll bet that that pudding is similar to it. Three tablespoons of cornstarch, a cup of sugar, salt, water, milk, eggs, lemon extract, and vanilla extract. That sounds very much like our lemon pie filling. I'll take that one. Let's see what I have. Yep, I've destroyed that book. Shame on me. I'll be using it. I will be using it. What's going on in chat? Hi, Deborah Brown. Welcome, welcome, Deborah. Is Sherry in here? Hi, Sherry. Hi, Barbara. Sherry Van and Barbara Chicken Pot Pie Society. Julie said, what is Mary's tabletop for her to be so brave with that knife? It's actually, this is a piece of freezer paper that's on a foam board. That's all it is. <laughs> all right, we're going to tear up some of these recipes. Lemon cornstarch pudding. And I think I'm going to use my ruler. And we'll see what happens here. Of course, my ruler needs to be cleaned. And I guess maybe...
And I had saved these for my glue book out of an old book that was turning yellow. And then I painted right over them, my, my margins. Let's see if I can save them and not paint over them this time. Now, I don't know if I want to mix these up or put them, you know, different ways or if I just want to put them straight. I don't know. I think I got this for the strawberry shortcake. Strawberry shortcake sounds like a quilt pattern, doesn't it? Oh, Tim sent me his video for Saturday. Video hop. Is Tim in here? Did Tim come in here? Hi, Lala. Welcome, welcome. Good night, Lori. Oh, Lala. She says, hello, sweet. She's going to work. Fibromyalgia is hurting her. Oh, she's going to lurk. Her fibromyalgia is hurting her. It's hard to use her hands. Oh, Lala, you take care of yourself. Barbara says, Judy in disguise, like lemonade pie. That's what you are. Barbara's singing. Do, 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 do. Yeah, we made cornstarch lemon pie filling. Made it in home ec. Yeah, that's how we made ours with cornstarch too. And actually, it's pretty good pie. Pie. I like lemon pie. My brother doesn't really care for it, but I like it. I haven't made one of those in a long time. So do I want to keep the recipes intact? I wasn't thinking about it, but it's awful, awful hard to tear these cool recipes up. So I might just fit them on. Because the dill butter could go that way. Uh, I'm going to save my margins. Yeah, got to save the trashy trash. <laughs> And what I should do is ink the edges. Let's see. We're going to do the dill butter here. So that'll fit on the side. So, we'll do the dill butter up over this way, like that. Cornstarch pudding here, and I need another little recipe. Dutch dumplings, that might fit on there. Dutch dumplings, I think that's why I cut that out. This, actually, I'm doing this inspired by Becky. She said that Trashinichi is begging to be a recipe book. And so it can just beg away. That's what it's going to become. And then this is just Magic Lace and Gossamer. This is a fairies. So this is one way to alter a book is make a trashinichi, you know, make a recipe book. This I got this book at the thrift store. It probably would have been tossed if nobody would buy it, so I don't feel guilty doing this. That's how I get rid of my guilt. Now, let me...
this here and here and it just fits maybe overlap it just a little right there right in there and right there now i have to do the bottom so I think this will just fit if I cut it right to the, let's do the margin first. Right to the very, very last sentence here. And right up in here. right in there just fits all right i'm gonna stop at this point and then and start taking this off we're gonna start with the dill butter over here if and i can if and i can we'll see how hard this is I got it. Come on. Oh, let's just put it like that. And let's do the dill butter right up in, right up in. Right there. Now, I'm going to cut, because I don't want, or I can even, can I tear this? Yeah, I can tear it. And I think I had the shortcake in here. Oh, and I forgot to color them. That's okay. That's all right. I like it like this, too. Maybe I'll swish some ink on them when I'm done. Right in there. And... It, if there's paper on here, where does it come to? Right here. No, I can't see it. hold of it here I'll let that come down like that alrighty now I had the it wasn't the Dutch dumplings it was this I'll take this off We'll tear a, a bit of this and tear a tiny bit of this, maybe a tiny bit more, and fold it up like that.
right in there. And then this still needs a, I don't know. That'll fit on there, won't it? It needs to be a little bit more. So I have to hunt for another recipe. Let's put this one on. get a hold of it here. Uh, can't see where I'm going. a little bit more here. One and done. One and done. You put it on there, it's on there. It's a little crooked there, but you can still read it. One and done. Let's tear this off and put my Dutch dumplings in here. There we go. So now I just have this spot and the edge over here to do. So, I have to find some smaller recipes. I wonder if this would make a good release paper. I'm going to order some more of this. Dee Dee said she got it on Amazon, but I think this will make nice for my... I'm going to use what she sent me, but I think it'll be good for my... Um, I'm going to test this out for release paper on my carpet tape. See how that works. All right, let's get some smaller recipes. Let me set this aside so I don't mess it up. If I can. And let's put these. I'm going to save that sheet. Let's put these borders in here. I don't know where I got this, but they'll work. They'll fit in here. Good to keep them for a bit. All right, I need some narrow recipes. About three or four of them. Wild mint tea. That's fairly narrow. Oh, look, here's some more. This will become a Tanya project. Tanya likes to do this with her envelopes. and I did that, and I painted them out. I saved all those vintage book margins, and then I painted them all out, covered them all up. That was useless. Hi, Holly Dalton. Holly, I got your candle out here. I'm burning your candle tonight. <laughs> All right. I am looking for small recipes. This is really a cool book. Hmm, maybe the chapters. Maybe the chapters in the margin. I think so. Let's 
tear some out. Maybe about two pages here. Now that that was quick. And yeah, I think that'll fit on there quite nice. this side first. You know, it seems a shame to tear these books up, but truthfully, I get more enjoyment. I get a lot more enjoyment out of them this way. I think I can go clear over to here on this. And the purpose of books is are to enjoy them. So, yep. Let's put this one down in here. That's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. It's a little crooked, but that's okay. I might be able to straighten that out after I get it down. Kindness is such a very simple thing. That's what that says. And I'm going to trim this off a little. Oh, my scissors. And we need this one to be just a little bit wider. We'll put that back in the book. The patter of little feet, oh baby, you're mine. When he grows to be a man. Easter picnic and a trip to Sutter's Mill. cut this one a little wider Let's see which, which one fits on here I need it to be this one And I think right at the top of that pumpkin there. Right in. Right in there. Oh, I didn't take the paper off of it. <laughs> that was smart. My help to take the release paper off. Let's do that again. <laughs> yep, one and done. One and done. All right, let's put this in the scrap sack, the margin scraps. And I'll come back to those maybe if I work on my Rolodex. 
And these are going to go back in the book. Oops. Oh, I got more here. Isn't it funny the things that we save to do our artwork with? Scraps. All right. And these are going back in the book. And I'll be using this book for... I love the pictures in it. Like this. I'll be using it. Nothing will go to waste. Let's put this band around it. Keep it together. And there we go. Okay, now we need to put this. I think I'll trim this a little more. In my, as a wraparound for my trash Nietzsche. sticking to my and let's trim this side there we go and not exactly straight but it's a trash and Ichi. it doesn't have to be exact I just want to get get it and I'm gonna leave that because it says dill butter now I'm thinking I should put a coat of something over this Oh, let's see. Do I want to leave it like this? See, I think I should put something over this to protect it. To glue it down a little better. Put my scissors away. And... Let's try, let's try something here. I have this, I've got the light blue, and I've got the red, what else do I have here? I've got a green and a gray, Is that light blue again. Let's try. Let me get a sponge out. I'm going to try to just kind of ink up that. And I think I'm going to do the light blue. Alrighty, let's see what happens here. The light blue kind of goes with it because there was a little light blue over here. <laughs> That's my reasoning. 
And I want to remind you guys that while I'm doing this, if you have something to say to me, wait until I come out. Because I'll never see if you ask me a question or something. Like, what was the name of that book? It's, let me get it out again, the book. The book that I'm using, the cookbook, I got it at the thrift store. Jane Watson Hopping, The Pioneer Lady, The Country Mother's Cookbook. It was published in 1991 by Random House. The Country Mother's Cookbook. And I really like it because not only does it have interesting um, recipes in it, it's got all these cool illustrations and little poetry sayings and country, kind of a country woman scrapbook type thing, cookbook scrapbook. I think once you get that down there, it's kind of spongy, but that's okay. I'm going to have to take this paper off or it's starting to curl up on me there. I might do that tonight and make an art journal page out of it for my June art journal. Now, I could have just went around the border, but, yeah, we'll just do it this way. You can kind of see the square squareness of my sponge, but I'm not so helped on that. And I don't think that, uh, I don't think water will smooth this out. This is archival ink. So we'll just do it this way. The matte medium might move it a little. Varnish might move this a little. We'll, we'll varnish it and see if it moves my ink any. Sometimes the varnish will move the permanent inks. Let's put some varnish on this and see what happens. Hold the phone. Let me reach for it. I saw it today when I was putting that textile medium away. <sighs> we got satin varnish. And let me get a brush. I got to, I've got to uh, put my brushes in some, some uh, Murphy's oil soap, clean them out. But this one will work for now. Let's see if this varnish will move this ink any. Not too much. That's okay, too. Now, I don't think I can dry this 
with a heat gun, I think I'll melt the <laughs> wallpaper. So we're just going to set this aside and let it dry on air dry. I think I'll melt the wallpaper if I try to heat set this. We don't want to melt it after I've gone to all this work. There we go. It's kind of curling up on me. Alrighty, that's good enough. I'm going to set this aside and let it air dry. It won't take too long to dry by the time I'm ready to put it in the book. It'll be dry. All right, so there was that. Let me put this away. There was that. Let's see what you guys are saying in chat. Let's look at chat. What's going on? A lot of happy faces. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Becky. When you clear coat it, if you use a brayer, it will go on without spreading everywhere a brush moves stuff. Yeah, I still like a brush. <laughs> my brayers, my brayers are not... Uh, Let's put it this way. My brayers are well used. <laughs> They're not smooth. Um, but that's good advice, Becky. Becky is saying when you clear cut coat something, if you use a brayer, it'll go on without spreading everywhere a brush would move stuff. Yeah, I, I kind of wanted that ink to move a little more, but uh, it didn't move a lot. But that's okay. They say, hi, Becky. Hi, Becky. Cheryl is here. She's saying hello to Deborah and Lala. Barbara Chicken Pot Pie Society is here. Cheryl says, hello, Mary and all. Brittany says, I save my book page strips to make little snippet rolls that I stitch on and use for embellishments. What a great idea. I'll have to get out that $5 sewing machine. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was, um, what was I doing Friday? What was I doing Friday? Oh, Friday was our, our hop, our time for our hop. And, um, you know, it, I was hosting it. So, um, Becky had her craft room open on Friday, but since I was in every hop, I needed a break. So I didn't make it into Becky's craft room Friday, but I'll make it next Friday. I'll make it next Friday. Holly's here or was here. Janet says, when I came in, she was cutting pages from a cookbook. Yeah. I'm making a wraparound for that Trashinichi on the back of that page where I've clodged all those recipes down is the wood grained um, wallpapers, peel and stick wallpaper that Dee Dee sent me. And it's going to become a wraparound for my Trashinichi because Becky said, that book is just begging to be a recipe book. So that's what we're making out of, a recipe book. Holly says hello to everyone. Becky says, I also love banana coconut cream pie. Mmm, that sounds good. Coconut and lemon slices, yummy. We're talking about lemon pie. There's Tim. Tim, if you're still here, he was here at 6.45. Uh, Tim, if you're still around, I did get your video. I saw it come across on this tablet. I, I'm streaming right now, but I'll, I'll copy it and put it on the list. Tim uh, contributes videos for our Saturday, our fourth Saturday hop. Yay! Tim says, hi, Mary. Hi, Tim. 
We're back to where Barbara was singing. Judy in disguise, like a lemonade pie. That's what you are. <laughs> oh. All right. I think I've caught up with chat. Let's go back down to the bottom. Mina is here. Mina says, before I go back into Lurk, hi, everyone. They're saying hello back to Nina. Maybe I should have sprayed it blue. Yeah, I could have sprayed it blue, too. Uh, I do have some blue distress spray, but I inked it. Um, yeah, spray would have worked. You could do anything you want. That's what I chose to do. It's just a trash and itchy. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm I'm not into perfection. All right. So, what else did I want to do tonight? Oh, I had all lots of stuff out. Let's work in this. Let's work in this little Rolodex. Let's work. The, let's do a little Rolodex card. I'll have to. This little Rolodex came from Annie V. And I've done three here. I'll have to pull. Let's pull a couple out. And I've got this wood grained. This came off of the trimmings off of. Off of that wood grained. Paper. So we're going to use that, and uh, let's see what I have. Oh, <laughs> I'm saying oh because I'm surrounded by stuff. I'm surrounded. Let's see. Let's see what's in here. I think I saved these. I was going to make cards. I think. Let's see what's in here. Maybe I can find some stuff in here. Uh, well, this is text. There's Snow White. I kind of like that. Uh, these are just mats. Here, I have a whole bunch of black mats. The almanac. Those are just tear-offs. See, I was going to make some cards, some vintage cards out of magazine stuff. I've got enough to do a couple of Rolodex cards. Everything you always wanted to know. Curious reader, I might attempt to gain thy favor by declaring I write almanacs with no other view than that of the public good. So I think they're talking about this. The plain truth of the matter is I am excessive poor. <laughs> Thus poor Richard Saunders, alias Ben Franklin, introduced his almanac, most famous of its kind, but not first. Nearly a century earlier in 1639, Massachusetts folk who needed to know what time the sun rose and set or tides peaked and ebbed, or when to plant crops, could consult an almanac printed at Cambridge. Soon every colonial press was turning out a yearly almanac at a tidy profit. Philadelphia printers gained an edge with the first paper mill in 1690. So he's talking about the almanac. I kind of like that. And that's just more of the same here. So what do I have here? Anything about Snow White? I don't think so. So let's just tuck these back in here and see what I can do with this. I'll, I'll zoom in. A little so you can see what I'm doing. I'm thinking about the almanac on here. Hmm. I might put some text. This is part of this. And you know, this is uh, it's too thin. I 
I don't know if I like it on there because it's not fitting. Uh, it's not fitting. Maybe I'll go with Snow White. <laughs> Let's do Snow White instead. And I'm not going to, let me zoom in a little here so you guys can see. I always have to jump up when I zoom in. Because <laughs> my phone's up above me. No, that's too much. There. Okay. Let me get my tea out again. I'm thirsty. <sighs> I don't know how late I'll be on tonight. Um, the last few Sunday nights I've been quitting kind of early. And I might do that again tonight. In other words, I probably won't be on till 4 o'clock in the morning. Uh 10, 10.30, up around in there. What time is it? It's 7.30. I'm going to put it right over those and snip them out. And this is just using up stuff that I have around. Uh, I have a lot of stuff around. <laughs> Let's see. Maybe I'll snip these before I tear. And it's picking up the gunk on my fingers. Come on. It's sticky. It's sticky, sticky, sticky. All right, we're going to put that down there. And then I'm just going to take this and kind of guesstimate. It's one and done with this stuff. I want to get all the I want to get all the elves on there. The no, what are they? The little grumpies. What are they? They're not elves, are they? Grumpy and dumpy and sneezy. <laughs> Help. I can't remember what they are. They're, they're not gnomes. Are they? Dwarves! Thank you. <laughs> they're dwarves. I couldn't remember what they were. Dwarves are dwarves. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. That's embarrassing. Snow White and the Seven Elves. <laughs> All right. I've got a little tape here on the border, but I'm going to put some of that. I 
actually her castle's over here. That would be fun to go on the back. We'll see. Let's trim this off a little. You don't have to be perfect with this stuff. All right. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And I was thinking, maybe frame this with some of this self-stick stuff. Scrap leftover. This is the rough edge that I cut off. This might look good over here. I'm just using up. We're just using up. can get it opened up here. Penelope, I need a pen. She just says, I'm here, Mary, I'm here. I take, when I have trouble getting this stuff off, I take a pen and you want to go between the release paper and I don't know how it'll work on this, but the between the release paper and the Come on. Doesn't seem to be working so great on here. Come on. There it went. We're just going to put it on here just to use it up. Just to use it up. Of course. There we go. can get it a little closer to the edge. <laughs> I got gunk on my scissors. Here. Do I want to put all that on there? Let's take a little of that. Let's see if I can get some of that blue in there. My um, desk is wiggling and it's jiggling something on the cart. <laughs> I hear a rattling. Come 
Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, I can't see. That's my problem. I can't see where I'm going. There. That's pretty good. Not perfect, but I'm not going for perfection. I cut an article out of our newspaper. There's a lady who writes craft articles or... Just, you know, mostly craft, sewing, knitting, that type of thing. But she was talking about online tutorials. And she was saying how, have good lighting, what she looks for in a good craft tutorial. And I'm going, yeah, but some of us aren't tutorials. Some of us are just having fun. <laughs> some of us are just having fun. Now, that kind of cuts it off a little, but that's okay, too. Um, we can actually compensate for that. we we'll put in a ribbon there. Put in a ribbon. I kind of like the ribbon there. Let's put that down. I'm going, I don't do tutorials. Don't come to my channel. And say how disappointed you are. I was thinking that she was my my uh, stream is probably one that she would bypass because I don't have good lighting. I don't edit a script. I you know I just go play. I just come play. That's all. That's all I'm about is playing, and you guys can watch me play. I'm not trying to teach anybody anything. But I enjoy her articles. And I guess maybe my reaction is that maybe somebody will come to my channel and think I'm trying to teach them something. And you guys, you guys know. Now let's snip this off. And take the release paper off here. Oh, I know. I was going to put my June pages together tonight. Trying to think of what else I was going to do tonight. I should do a list. Maybe we'll do a list. After I do my June pages. I'm just going to get the pages out. I'm not going to bind the journal and everything. I kind of like to figure out what I'm going to do. I kind of like that. Kind of looks like they're sit sitting by a tree here. And she's... Yeah, I'm good with this. Let's snip this out. And I think I'm just going to, well, no, I can get in there and kind of curve it.
Yeah, I don't do tutorials, but if I'm doing a tutorial, I'd probably have to sit and plan it all out. And by the time I got all that done, <laughs> I just, you know, my fun is gone. It's like doing a lesson plan. And, and uh, no, not for me. I'd rather just go play. There we go. I'd rather play. I'd rather play. Let's see what I have here. Oh, I poked through the foam board. good with that. Do I need a word? Do I need a word? I thought I had some words out. Uh, here's some place. Here they are. Let's put a word on there. These are the new Tim Holtz words. He, quotations. Free to fly, shine brightly, happy together, you are loved, remember the now. Make a wish. Collection of memories. Let's pull them on out. These are the new ones. I think they're black, gold on black, and white, gold on white, and... I prefer the gold on black. The gold on white doesn't seem to show up very good for to me. I guess it's gray on white. They show up a little, but can you guys see those words? Beautiful day. Hello, friend. Create art. Make a wish. Happy together. Believe in yourself. Love you to the moon and back. See the world. Trust your heart. Best day ever. Let's celebrate. Always and forever. Oh, they're the same. They're the same. These two shits are the same. And it, this these words are the same on all four sheets. Dwell in possibility, dreamer of dreams. From the heart. I have to figure out what I want. Own your story. I kind of like that. Own your story. Own your story. That's what we're going to put on here. Own your story. There we go. Own your story. I like that. Except it's down a little too far. There. Own your story. Now, did I do the back of these others? I did. I guess I have to do the back. So we'll just do something fast. 
What shall we do? Text. Uh, Walt Disney produced his full, first full-length cartoon, Snow White, with the help of 570 artists. Other artists like Boris Karloff. Other artists made Boris Karloff 18 inches taller and 60 pounds heavier for his role in Frankenstein. Well, we'll put that on here. We'll just... We just want something on the back. And I think what I'll do is put this this on first, th these on here, and then put this over it like that. I think that will work. And it'll be fast and easy. <laughs> What's going on in chat? Clint says, Cheryl, I wish I had a lot of his stuff. Uh, Mary Lou. Hi, Mary Lou. Uh, Deborah says, Clint, I hope you didn't think I was going to leave Mary to watch you on YouTube. That's rude. <laughs> if you want to go watch, if anybody, if somebody's streaming or doing a video at the same time I am, I don't mind that, but what I do mind is if you come in and said, hi, I'm streaming, or somebody says, hi, so-and-so is streaming now, you know, that kind of bothers me because that takes my viewers away from me. But like if Rosemary decided she wanted to go on at the same time I was, as long as she didn't come in and announce it and, you know, draw my viewers away, I wouldn't mind. But I, I really don't like people coming in and saying, so-and-so is streaming now, you know, something like that. And it's more like, you know, if you're on YouTube, you know how to find out who's streaming. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So uh, that's kind of been my long-term, long, long-time uh, opinion on that. I had... And it doesn't happen that often. It happened when I very first started streaming. Somebody came in and said, so-and-so is streaming now. And I'm going, well, so am I. <laughs> so, but if, if I'm streaming and you see somebody streaming at the same time, if you want to go watch them, you know, hey, it's your life. It's your world. I'm not going to stop you from going and watching who you want to watch. I just don't want you to come in and announce that somebody's on at the same time I am. And I'm not mad at anybody about anything. I'm just saying what my opinion of that is. I, I kind of got into that a long time ago. And I don't even remember who that was. I don't even remember, but I remember saying it. Yeah, you guys are free to go watch who you want to watch. It's your life. It's your it's your time. It's your hours. You're all, we're all adults. You you know who you like to watch. That's my attitude. All right, we're gonna put this on here. Like this. Only I'm going to tear this a little in here. If I can. And that's going to go right in here. And I have a lot of people who who come back and watch the replays, you know, something's going on in your life and you can't stay for the stream or you want to watch, but, you know, something else is going on, you come back and watch the replay, that's fine with me too, you know, I understand uh, life is, life gets busy for us, 
Yeah. I get it. Because I do the same thing. You know, I can't... Sometimes I can't sit and watch four hours of a stream as much as I'd like to. You know, just too much happens. All right. So this is going to go right down in here. Just like so. And I'm going to trim this up. Just a little over here. Just an itsy bitsy tiny bitsy bit. Boy, something's really knocking over here. I don't know what it is. It's bugging me. I think it's my pans against my desk here. I guess I'm going to have to Pull all of that out and I haven't I haven't found the source of the knocking yet. It's just going to have to knock until I'm done streaming tonight. All right, there we go. Ah, I'm liking it. Own your story. Own your story, Walt Disney would say. So we're just going to put this, we're just going to file it in here. I'm only going to do one of these tonight. Maybe I'll keep this out and... All right, let's put this away. Let's put all my scrappies away. Scissors get put away. Uh, these. These might go good in my rust journal. The almanac stuff. The vintage. Or maybe even my glue book. throw all this away. I might save that castle. All right, let me zoom out again. So what have I done tonight? I did a border. I tore apart the cookbook to work in the trash and ichi. We could work some more in that, but I want to and I did a Rolodex card. I was going to show you some Happy Mail, but that's Happy Mail is for another project. I didn't realize that that's who it was from. All right, let me put my knife away. Maybe we'll do a list next, though. Let's do a list. Let me get out a piece of paper. Let's, let's do a list. I need to talk to you guys more. We're going to do a list. And what we're going to do is 5, 16, 21. Let me zoom out a little. 
Welcome to everybody who's come in that I haven't welcomed yet. Let me look at chat just a little, catch up with you guys. Deborah says, I don't think the hospital would have allowed my laptop in the operating room. <laughs> or I wouldn't have had to catch you on the replay this week. <laughs> I just got a funny picture of you insisting to take the laptop into the operating room with you. Wait a minute, Mary's on. <laughs> Hold my surgery till I watch this. <laughs> Deborah, you funny lady. Mary Lou is here. Julie's here. Cheryl's here. I can only watch one person at a time. Me too, Cheryl. I can't walk between people. And sometimes I will, but not very often. Because, you know, I if I'm watching Aunt Beck, I'm watching Aunt Beck. If I'm watching Lisa, I'm in Lisa's stream. And that's where my attention is. And if I can't watch all night, then, you know, I go do what needs to be done. But, all right, we're going to do a list. And I've been working out in the yard and planting gardens. So the list is, what, what are you planting in your garden? Now, this does not necessarily have to be a physical garden, a flower garden, or a vegetable garden. It can be, but are you planting words? What words are you planting? What do you expect to uh, to grow from them? So what are you planting in, rather than garden, I'm going to, well, let's say in your, in your little... What do you call that? Your little green earth? Your little green... Your little plot of ground. Your little plot. That's P-L-O-T. What are you planning in the little plot of your life? How does that go? So, it, it could be one, flowers or vegetables or food or pizza. So... Yo-yos. Angie says yo-yos. Angie's planning yo-yos. <laughs> I love it, Angie. Let me get the laptop out here so I can watch you guys better. Bird seeds to grow lots of birds, Janet says. Bird seeds. Bird seeds. To grow birds. <laughs> to grow lots of birds. Fussy cuts, Cheryl says. <laughs> I love it. Fussy cuts. Cheryl's planning fussy cuts. Julie says ephemera. These are good. Ephemera. What else are you guys planting in your little, what is that? Your little green acre? <laughs> Karen says, Mary, I always choose to watch you over the other art streams. My internet is misbehaving this. Oh, Karen. You don't have to choose me uh, to watch somebody uh, over somebody else. If you want to go watch somebody else, I want you to, I, my attitude is that we're adults, you know, and we can decide who we want to watch. I appreciate that you watch me, but I'm not insisting that people come here and watch me over somebody else who's streaming at the same time. You know, it's your life. It's your time. You watch who you want to watch. Maybe they're doing something that really appeals to you. And maybe I'm doing something really boring, you know. So um, uh, my attitude is I appreciate everybody who comes in. But if somebody's streaming at the same time I am and you want to go watch them, go watch them. Uh, but just don't come in here and announce that they're streaming at the same time I am. Because then you'll take everybody away from my stream. What are you planning in your reality garden? Oh, in your reality garden? Reality garden. Well, it doesn't have to be real, but it could be. I've gone back to foiling, Deborah says. You've started a trend, Mary. <laughs> I think I've followed a trend. Uh, 
I'd love to see some of the things you do, Deborah. Post it in Fibsville. I'd like to see if you can post something in Fibsville or on Facebook. I'd love to see what you're doing. Or Life Garden. Oh, I like Life Garden. What are you planning in your Life Garden? I like that better. I've always had my phone and tablet going, Angie says. Plant ideas. Auntie Loopy is planting ideas. Now you're sounding like Dee Dee. Cheryl says, hi, Angie. Um, of course... I'm planting marigolds. I did that. I did that yesterday. I got more marigolds to plant. I kind of went overboard buying marigolds this year. Last year, I could hardly find marigolds and impatience. This year, they're all over the place. And I can't find those little moss rose, moss roses. I can find all sorts of moss roses last year. Now I can't find any. I suppose I can have to grow them from seed. The Artist's Way, Sherry Van says. Oh, oh, you're reading The Artist's Way? That's cool, Sherry. Hi, Deborah River City Creative. And Deborah Brown says, okay. <laughs> She's going to show some of her foiling projects. Shall I put foiling? Foiling for Deborah? She's planning foiling. <laughs> It's turning all gold. We're doing a list. What are you planning in your garden? Uh, in other words, um, could it be like happy, positive thoughts? Positive thoughts. You know, if you watch the news, it's so easy to think we're going to hell in a handbasket. <laughs> It's so easy to think that. You have to say, okay, I'm going to think positive here. Things may not be as rosy as as, as I'd like them to be, but it's all going to work out. And you know, um, I remember that song, he's got the whole world in his hands. You know, he does. He's got the whole world in his hands. And when I think the world is going to hell in a handbasket, I go, who's holding the handbasket? <laughs> You know, so um, you got to think positive. You can't let you can't let the crap get you down. That's what I'm trying to say. Don't let the crap out there get. It doesn't have to be on the news. Maybe somebody in your life is having a bad day. Or giving you a bad time. They're saying they're saying hello to each other out there. RCC is River City Creative. That's her name is Deborah too. Angie says, "Oh, hello to all of you. You love that song, Angie. I do too. Yeah, we used to sing that song when when I was a kid. In fact, my older sister taught it to me, and I can just close my eyes and re and and I can almost hear her singing that. And you know, my my older sister was not a religious person." Um, but she, she taught me that song and I can almost just close my eyes and see her, see her teaching me that song. Trying to listen more to audio books, Cheryl said, without falling asleep. Shall I put audio books? Are you planning, are you, are you planning audio books in your life? <laughs> I'm putting it down. What are you planning in your garden? Cheryl says, yes, Mary. <laughs> usually you guys are zipping ahead of me. And usually I can't keep up with you. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting. Come on. What are you planting in your garden? Vegetables? Vegetables. Peas and carrots and corn and and uh, what else did I plant out there? Canna, canna lilies, canna lilies. I can't wait till my canna lilies. Um, let me get them out here. Canna, 
henna lilies. I, I'm going to put these in my Edith Holden book. I planted two packages of these. Canna lilies. I can't wait till they bloom. They don't bloom until late fall. Bulbs can be grown anywhere in the garden. Cannas will do well in any soil, providing it is well drained. Improve drainage in heavy soils by mixing in sand or peat to a depth of 8 inches. Plant the bulbs from the end of March to the end of May, about 2 inches deep and 5 to 6 inches apart. It is important to give the bulbs a good drenching immediately after planting. We did that. Flower height is 40 inches, so just about 3 feet tall, a little over 3 feet tall. They flower from June through August. I can't wait till they bloom. They haven't come up yet, though. Succulents, cardboard. Anna says, Anne, Anne says she's planting cardboard in her garden. <laughs> cardboard. Sherry says she's planting journaling. Journal, journaling. Holly says succulents. Oh, I got a little, uh, Holly, a little, you know what a mother and chick is? I got one of those. I haven't planted it yet. I've got to get out there and plant it. Blueberry bushes. Blueberry bushes. Yum. Blueberry bushes. They get tall and the bulbs triple. Tina. Hi, Tina. Yeah, I love how vibrant the color is on those um, can of canna lilies. I can't. Uh, they're really vibrant. You can. I I drive by them. I admire them in other people's gardens and driving by them. And let's see. This is number one. Number two. How about? How about artsy friends? I'm planning artsy friendship in my garden. Artsy friendships. That's one of mine. Sunflowers. Yes, my brother hates sunflowers. <laughs> he said they grow to be trees. He has to chop them down with a chainsaw. Hen and chicks. Yes. Hen and chicks. Holly says. Craft supplies. Craft supplies. Mina says, the gopher's back. He ate the tiger lilies again. Oh, no, Mina. Your little gopher ate the tiger lilies. That's all he likes. I think that's why he comes. <laughs> he goes, oh, boy, yummy. Tiger lilies for supper. Thank you, Mina. <laughs> Siberian, hi, hi, Nancy, Hudson Sailor. Siberian iris. Siberian iris. Ooh, that sounds pretty. Strawberries. Yummy. June is strawberry season, isn't it? Mina, my mom always grew tiger lilies, <laughs> Holly says. Angie says, I want to grow yo-yos that I have, that I will, I want to grow yo-yos that I will have them made all at once. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they just kind of grow themselves and you just have to go pick them. Hi, Angie. Raspberries. Hi, Allie Kay. Raspberries. Cornflower, coneflower. I love coneflowers. And I think coneflower is one of the things that will thrive underneath of a black walnut tree. Uh, those coneflowers. I think because I was looking up on the internet the type of plants. Now my hostas are doing really good out there underneath of that. And the marigolds survive. Weeds will grow. <laughs> uh, zinnia will grow, but it Takes a while for it to get started. <laughs> Mina says, I hope she doesn't have go uh, gophers. <laughs> Hostas. 
Yeah, hostas. Hostas hostas will just keep coming back year after year after year. My brother um got some of my mother's hosta plants. And gosh, that has to be 20, 30 years ago. And he planted them right outside that front porch where we sit, where I sit out there. And they got really thick, so I I uh I asked them to thin them out and give them some to me, and I planted them out there underneath that black walnut tree, and they're doing really good out there. This is the third year for them, and they're doing really nice. Wisteria. Wisteria. I don't know too much about wisteria. It's kind of like a bush, uh, isn't it? Wisteria? Is it kind of like a... I'm thinking of spirea, but... Wisteria is kind of like a bushy bush, isn't it? Ant repellent. <laughs> Ant repellent. <laughs> vine. Kathleen says vine. And that's vine. Vine, uh, when we go, I have to take, I when I took my, when my brother had to take his car to get in service, I followed him up there so he'd have a way home. Well, lo and behold, well, he was taking his car to get serviced while I was driving up there. A rock flew up and hit my windshield. Um, just kind of off to my line of vision. And uh, I asked the, the guy at the body shop, I asked him, I said, what would it take to fix it? And uh, I was thinking that windshield would cost me four or $500 to replace. He said 185 so I'm taking my car up Tuesday and we're going to get a new windshield for it. He said 35. He said I can stop the crack, but I can't make it go away. <laughs> he said I can stop it from cracking further, but I can't make it go away. I can't make it disappear. So I just decided to get a new windshield. So we're getting a new windshield for my car. But when we go up there, uh, I want to go to Menards. They had some sweet potato vine. And I don't know if it'll still be there. I looked at it and him and hawed over it. I think I could plant my own sweet potato vine, you know, start it in a in a little jar of water, but sweet potato vine. Let's see. Dinner plate dahlias. Dinner plate dahlias. Those sound huge. Dinner plate dahlias. They sound like they're 10 inches in diameter. Wisteria needs a, a pergola. The old-fashioned wisteria vines that you can train on a pole away from your house because they can cling and hurt the siding and brick. Really? Interesting. Peonies. Yeah, we've got peonies. I can't wait till they bloom. I thought they bloomed earlier in the year. I was My brother and I were talking about it, and I said, don't they bloom at the end of April? And he says, no, it's usually the end of May. So ours are budding out there. Wisteria equal woody vine with clusters of purple flowers that hang like grapes. Oh, really? Cool. Check your car insurance. Um... No, I don't think it's covered for me because here's the thing. I had really good insurance when I lived in Madison. My insurance in Madison, Wisconsin. Now, think this is the state capital of Wisconsin. It's a city. And it only cost me $63 a month. No bundling, nothing like that because I didn't own a house. And, you know, I didn't have anything to bundle with it. I had renter's insurance, but... They don't bundle car insurance with renter's insurance. But it only cost me $63 a month. The same company, when I moved down here to Nebraska in a little town out in the middle of nowhere, less than 1,000 people, and they wanted $185 a month. I got rid of them. <laughs> I got rid of them. I said, that's silliness. I said, how can I pay $60? $65 a month in Madison, Wisconsin, which is a city with, you know, with lots of traffic and get away with, and they say, oh, it's a difference in the state laws. And I'm going, that's crap. That is crap, you know. So I got rid of that company, but I, I, um, 
I'm buying my insurance from Farmers Mutual, and uh, I get a much better price, but I got rid of all the, you know, everything but what I need, because it's an, my car's an older car, it's a 2005, so collision damage, stuff like that, and I have a $500 deductible, so... I'm got, but that really upset me when they quoted me $185 a month down here. And I don't drive it that often. I, you know, two or, th two or three times a month at the most. Um, you know, I, I just don't go that often. And I'm going, I'm not going to pay you $185 a month. <laughs> There's my vent for the night. Think positive. Money, money, money. Somebody's growing money in their garden. <laughs> popcorn dahlias, Julie says. I love the popcorn dahlias. Check your insurance. Some are free. Yeah, I don't think mine is. Honeysuckles. Did I get that down? Honeysuckles. Lilacs. I'd love to have lilacs. I don't know if my brother will let me plant any, though. It's what the state will allow. Probably, Kathleen. Um, uh, maybe Wisconsin won't allow them to charge that much. Uh, and Nebraska will. That could be. But I got a much better price at another company. It's still costing me more than it costs me. I think I'm paying, well, they, because of the COVID, because of the COVID, they lowered the price. Um, and I like that about the company I'm with now, the Farmers Mutual. I think I'm paying like 86, 86 or I think it's 86 now. But, uh, you know, I just, I can't fathom $185 a month in a rural area. I, you know, I'm going, that's ridiculous. So I got rid of them. Ask your agent about low mileage driver rate. Yeah. Well, they should be taking all that into account. Um, I just, you know, and, and I went to two different agents for the same same company, and it was the same thing. You know, they what they do is they just take all your information and type it in, and it spits, the system spits out a rate. So I just dropped the company. I said, no, I can do better. I can do better. I'm not going to name the company, but I wasn't happy with it at all. I I can I can tolerate eighty six dollars a month. I still think that's kind of expensive. My brother pays less than that, but he bundles because he's got the pickup, his his van, his pickup, and the house. And well, the house is covered. With, the garage is covered with the house, so he bundles his. And I think he pays less insurance than I do. <laughs> Tulips, sunflowers. I got sunflowers. Doesn't hurt to check. No, it doesn't, Ann. Tulips. But I, I'm pretty sure that if I talk to my agent, I, I know I have a $500 deductible. And I'm not going to change insurance just to get my windshield. I I, I was thinking the, the windshield would cost me three or four or $500. And when he said, you know, I... I I talked to, to the guy at the body shop and I said it probably, you know, when we were talking about fixing it, I said it would probably cost me more than the car is worth to get the windshield replaced. And he said, no, he said it only cost you about 185 and And I was happy with that. You can't expect him to do it for nothing. Herbs. Herbs. Basil, thyme. Chives, oregano, parsley, sage, Allie says. Porn pom-poms. I thought that was porn. I'm going, who's planting porn? 
<laughs> P-O, it looks like P-O-R-N. It looks like porn porn. <laughs> what my small type? It's pom-poms. Pom-poms. <laughs> Let's see. I got lilacs and honeysuckle. Tulips. Did I got tulips? Yeah, that is highway robbery, Allie Kay. I'm going, I'm moving back to Madison. <laughs> uh, hyacinth. Oh, I love hyacinths. We get hyacinths every spring. Hyacinths. In fact, there are still some out there around our tree. If, well, we haven't had hot weather, so I imagine it's still out there around our, it grows around our tree in the front yard. The hyacinths does, the little purple ones. Lavender. Lavender. Love lavender. Tina says, I had to tell State Farm to change me to the low mileage rate, which is cheaper if you drive less than 7,500 miles. I think I drive less than 7,500. I'm not sure I asked for the low mileage rate, but I know I put up a fuss about it. I said, I hardly go any place. And they should have picked up on that. The agent should have picked up on that and said, oh, well, I can give you the low mileage rate. I don't think I specifically asked for that. That was a couple years ago. I'm not, I'm not going to go and... Um, I'm not going to go and change my insurance right now. Roses. I love roses. Rosemary. <laughs> rosemary. Uh, the herb rosemary. Rosemary herb. She's talking about not Rosemary Morris, but the rosemary herb. <laughs> I did grow some. I put some rosemary in that in my pot out in the front yard. It's in the pot with lavender and basil. Well, all you guys are cooking now. I'm on page number three. And it is number 40. Hydrangeas. Yes, I have a hydrangea called Becky. And it is, I'm hoping that it blooms this year. This is the third year for it. It's thriving. It's probably about a foot tall already. I'm hoping that it's going to bloom this year. Windshield coverage is separated from collision deductible. Oh, really? What does it fall under? Act of God? <laughs> when the rock hits the windshield? Is that what it falls under? I still have a $500 deductible, though. I don't think that, you know, no matter what the rate is, I'll probably end up paying for it because of the deductible. There shouldn't be a deductible for windshields. Oh, really? Cheryl says there should not be a deductible for windshields. Well, I guess I'll call my agent tomorrow. <laughs> I'll call my agent tomorrow and ask. I didn't know. I thought that the windshield would be just included in the entire deductible. Cucumbers. Cucumbers. Yeah, cucumbers. Lily of the Valley. I think we got um, Lily of the Valley. Is that little? It, does it look like little grass things, and then have little white star-shaped flowers? That's what we have growing out on our south. And I, I know it's not. Um, I know it's not hyacinths, and I know it's not those snowdrop. Uh, whatever they're called, the little snowdrop. I think we got some Lily of the Valley coming up. Correct. Windshield is different, Mary. It doesn't hurt to ask. That's true. I'll call my agent and ask. You guys are convincing me. <laughs> if I can save $185, I will. I love everything that is lavender, Angie says. Bleeding hearts. 
That reminds me of fuchsia. Is that fuchsia you're talking about? Or is that something different? Bleeding hearts. Uh, Emma, Amaranthus. Amaranthus? Emma, those are those red, those red plants. Those are really pr pretty. L pretty. Love lies bleeding. Or I might be thinking of sedum. When you call your agent, ask if you can get a reduction for low mileage. Oh, I will. I will, Jan. Thanks for suggesting that. And then, anime? A-N-I-M-E. What is that, anime? Boy, I'm learning here. Mary, pom pom, alligator. P O M dash P O M. Pom pom, not porn porn. <laughs> Poppies. Poppies. Orchids. You guys are onto the flowers. What else are you planning? Kathleen says she loves the name Love Lies Bleeding. Aw, it's kind of romantic, isn't it? Love Lies Bleeding. It's like, uh, my heart bleeds for you. I'm suffering. Janice said, I'm not sure the plant name, but we call this pink lily that comes up in late July, Naked Ladies. All the greenery comes up in the spring, then dies off, and you forget they are there. And then they pop out and bloom. Oh, cool. Well, I'm going to put naked lady flowers. <laughs> uh, that probably comes from uh, a legend, uh, probably folklore. Folk, folk, uh, it's probably, you know, like Love Lies Bleeding. There's probably a scientific name for it, but there's also a, a folk, common folk name for it. Julie says, <laughs> pom pom dahlias even. However, I'm convinced my spelling is wrong. No, I think your spelling is right, pom pom. It's just that, that the when I look at P-O-M, or P O M like that, I see P O R N. And I don't see, see, I see P O R N uh, for, for P O M. <laughs> Somebody will go, What is your are you writing on there, Mary? And when you glance at it in, in small case, and I'll see that sometimes uh, when I see my name written as, as M-E-R-I, like that. Sometimes it looks like M-E-N. So sometimes I'm looking at my name when I type my name in, in lowercase. Sometimes I see M-E-N, just glancing. And it's, the, it's how much space, it's how those letters get smished together here. It's the smashed, smashed letter syndrome. <laughs> Good night, Mary Lou. The kids wore Mary Lou out. Good night, everybody, she says. Good night, Mary Lou. Sweet dreams. Daisies. Rhonda says daisies. I planted two daisies. I planted them in a, in a, planter though I didn't plant them in the ground we'll see how they come up Tina says I love those Janice I have those they're talking about the the naked lady flowers Kathleen says Lily of the Valley is the I flower grooms wore in oh it's a flower that grooms wore in their lapel oh really where did I write Lily? I'm going to put grooms. Grooms. 
wear in lapel. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Thank you, Kathleen. Alum, Alum, A L L I U M. They're saying good night to Mary Lou. Barn boo? Oh, you mean bamboo. <laughs> See, there's another thing. See, B A M B O O looks like B A R N. B O O and I go, what's barn boo? <laughs> it's bamboo. It's bamboo. B A M B O O, Mary. <laughs> oh, that's funny. They're saying good night to Mary Lou. Naked lady is a name that because the flowers come before because the flowers come before the flowers, also known as belladonna lily. Oh, you mean the the leaves and the foliage come. Uh, uh, Janet says the leaves and the foliage come and then they all die down and then the flowers pop out. Belladonna lily. Belladonna lily. So they're a lily. Lamb's ears. Those are fuzzy pinks, aren't they? Lamb's ear. Bachelor buttons. I love bachelor buttons. They're pretty easy to grow, too, here. Hollyhock. Tina said, mine need thinned it out. <laughs> balloon flower. I don't know what a balloon flower is. Sounds like a big puffy flower, though. Balloon flower. Oh, we're ready for number four here. You guys are, are keeping me busy. One, two, three. You love your flowers. What else do you grow in your garden? Hollyhocks. What, what number is that? 55? Hollyhocks. Love hollyhocks. Hollyhocks to me say old time cottage. Country cottage. Lotus flower. That reminds me of a pond. Blue eyed grass. <laughs> Blue-eyed grass. Wild grass. Does that grow tall? Bloom flowers are sweet things. I have a white one. Hmm. I've never heard of them. Carnations. I'll have to look up bloom flowers. Carnations. Columbine. Columbine. Colorado Columbine. Julie says, and the more sunny spot they are, the pinker the flower. Lamb's ears are fussy silver leaves. Yes, with blooms on stalks a bit. Oh, yeah. Um, they use them a lot for foliage and planters, those lamb's ears. I know what you're talking about, Janice. Julie says, I love bluebells. Bluebells. Butterfly bush. <laughs> Butterfly bush. It checks all those butterflies. Patience, peace, and outlet. Patience, peace, and quiet. Patience. She's growing. This is a, not a flower. She's growing patience and peace. And I don't know why I say the outlet, but it's quiet. <laughs> Peace and quiet. She's growing quiet in her garden. Indigo. Indigo. Are we done? We've got quite a list. We've got 65. Let's stop. 
That was a fun list. What do you grow in your garden? Patience, peace, and quiet. And art. <laughs> art. We all grow art in a willpower. We'll put willpower here, 66. Willpower. That's a good one. Willpower. Benjamin Bush. Blossoms in dollar bills. <laughs> oh, stop! Benjamin Bush. Blossoms in dollar bills. I'll have to look that up. All right. Thank you, guys. This was a fun list. This will go in my journal. I love it when we do lists. So I can say to Dee Dee that we did a list. We did a list in our stream on Sunday night. I'll have to put this in my Society of Idea Collector. Where is that? Right here. Let's start, let's start putting our lists in my Society of Idea Collector journal. I'm ashamed to tell you guys I'm still on the famous people list. I'm going to have to work on my list. She's going to give us another assignment. This one is due tomorrow. I still have places, things, occupation and transportation and color to do. And I, <laughs> I tried to do that assignment. I don't like my little jellyfish police man. I like my list much better. I did that jellyfish policeman, and I just complained about him the whole time. You guys probably got sick of hearing it. Would she just get off of it? <laughs> Let's find something to make a pocket out of here. Mm. What can I make a pocket out of? Well, I'm just going to put it like this for now. Maybe I'll just put it in with a bobby pin. Bobby pin, that's a good idea, Mary. I grow bobby pins. Um, I want to start a list journal. But when we do stuff like this as a group, I like to do it on separate sheets of paper because I like to scribble them out. While we're, and I don't want to scribble in this. Although Dee Dee says, don't try to be so neat. This is a journal of ideas. Be sloppy. Go at it. All right, I'll work on that after the stream tonight. What else was I going to do? I was going to put together my June pages. Let's do that. And if, this is not the cover. This is just the... If I don't get started on my next month's journal, I don't get it done. And I like to have my journal... Let me zoom out a little. I like to have my journal done by the time the first of the month rolls around. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to zoom out here. I'm giving you guys quite a ride because my camera's acting up. Hold it one more time. There. And it uh, needs to come over this way a little more. There we go. Thank you guys for the list. That was fun. What do you grow in your garden? Scraps. Scraps. I grow lots of scraps in my garden. Lots of trash and itchy stuff. Allie Kay said she'd grow wisdom if she could. <laughs> The squirrels in our neighborhood like to plant corn in our garden. <laughs> they say, Lil, we'll help you out. We get those little maple tree helicopters. You know what I'm talking about? I noticed that they were blowing in the wind last week. All right, I only need eight pages. One, because eight times four is 32. One, two, and then I put in a couple more just for one, two... Three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight. I'm going to put in a couple extra just for extra because I generally need extra. Although I haven't been art journaling the same way as I have in the prior years. So I don't know if I'll get all these used. But these are cream colored 11 by 17 and I get them at the office supply store. And I might do something different for my cover. What was I going to do different? I can't forget. Use one of those uh, quilted, that quilted piece that I got at the, I don't know if I want to do that. For, although the lighthouse would be good for June, I'll have to decide what I, I'm going to move this Rolodex or I'm going to knock it off on the floor probably knock it off on the floor when I put it over there. So all I do is fold these papers in half. There's three. And I think I'm going to do ten of them. And they don't have to be perfect. It would probably be better if I I could see better what I'm doing. Four. We'll go back to our trash Nietzsche and work on that. I think it's dry over there, dry enough to work with. Time is at 8 40. I'll probably be on 10 10 30. I'm not going to stay up till 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning. It tires me out. I get tired, especially when I've been working in the yard and I've got more yard work to do. It rains, so our grass is going to shoot up. Shoot up. I'm going to sneeze. Excuse me. I always get mad at my brother because he sneezes during my stream in the morning. And then I sneeze. <laughs> I can forgive me. It's a sneeze that's heard around the world, I tell him. He just laughs and then I'll sneeze in my own stream. And then I'm embarrassed because I get mad at him for doing something that I do myself. <laughs> Hypocrite! I'm calling myself that. Nobody else. Don't. Don't demonetize me. Because I reprimanded myself. <laughs> let me. Let me put some hand sanitizer on my hands. After sneezing and you don't need to stay up late, Angie says. Allie K says, Good. <laughs> the squirrels in our neighborhood like to plant corn in our garden. Allie K says, Now what I want to do on these pages, and I got them out here somewhere. <laughs> I got them out. I saved them out. I did save them out, didn't I? Oh, I'm so good. Hold on. They're here. They're here. I just don't know what stack they're in. <laughs> Come on, I saved them out special tonight. Are they behind me? Oh, here they are. I've got these, these, I like to put in 2021, when I do my journals, I've been putting, I've been putting interesting stuff 
Now I might have to, well, these will almost fit. I might have to cut the margins down just a little on these pages. And I'll just do it with a ruler. And I like, this is signing the, let's see, these are stamps. This is page 99. That's page 23, 24. Where's, here, I messed it all up. Stamps, collectibles here. I have to straighten these out. And I can't do them all. USPS. There we go. I think that's silk postcards and bookmarks. That's 27 silver. Here's some more stamps. Silver, silver. Look at these. Aren't these cool? This is from a book called the Encyclopedia of Collectibles. And these are ones that I couldn't bear to cut up. Here's some more stamps. Looks like we're going to go postage stamp in, in uh, June. Look at these. Aren't these cool? And then I got some silhouettes. I'll save the silhouettes and the silverware for another time. I think that's all of them. Okay. This is a book from a book called Encyclopedia of Collectibles, Time Life Book. And I don't know if I have the copyright on it. Yeah, I must here. Uh, do, 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 Encyclopedia of Collectibles. I think I got this at one of the library sales. So, we are going to do postage stamps in my journal. I've got plenty of them. Plenty of cool postage stamps. I might sit, put that one into another. Issues of the United States, postage stamps, collectibles for everyone. There we go. How many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, that's perfect. All right. So let's put my pages and I don't know if I can make this all one signature. I'm going to try to. No, maybe two signatures. Four. Maybe two signatures here. Five. And one, two. See, if I get this all going and then I'll bind it sometime next week and I'll have it all ready to go for June. I, uh, if I, some, last year I wasn't getting this done until the first of the month, and then I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have anything to work in when the first of the month came. All right, so now I just want to, let's see, I want to find, I think I'll put this as a, put one of these really colorful ones as, as a cover. Maybe that one and, ooh, this one. This one. All right. So this will go on, this will go on the front page. And I'm just going to tear it just a little. Um, and what I do, I can do it two ways. But what I've been doing is letting the page flip open so I can work on the underneath part of it. And since this is going to go on the front, yeah, Mary's talking to herself here. Well, I'm not going to have much tear room on that. Let's see. One. Let's do it this way. One. Two. 
No, let's do it this way. Let's go that stamp collecting for everybody here. Stamps collect collectible for everyone. And then there'll be a letter on the back. So there's two. And then issues of the stamps. We'll put that in there. And, uh, This is Confederate. Let's put it that way. And I got plenty. I'm putting one on every other page. I think. Is that going to work? I might have to. I might have to sort these out a little bit more. One, two, three, four. My sponge out of the way. So one there, and then I'm putting them here. So there, and I think I'm going to leave a, a page here. So let's let's just leave a blank page and put that one because I have to have some for the other signature. Yeah, got to plan this stuff out. Uh, we'll leave that and put this one here. And we still have, what, three left? I might need this one. Let's just grab this one. Silk postcards. All right, let's see what I have in the other signature. I'm just putting it, I'm just getting them together. Make sure I have what I want in each one before I tape them down. So one, two, three. Ooh, let's put this on the cover. I like that. I like both of them. One, two, three, four, five. So we'll put this on the front. One. I'm going to skip one. I'll put this one too. Three. Four. Five. And I actually have a couple left. All right. Let's see what I have here. All right. That one there. I have one left. So when I open my journal, whatever my cover will be, when I open it, this will show on the first page. And then I can write. It'll be a flip. And I can journal on the back side of it. And if I need to read this, I can just turn the book upside down and read it. So one. Stamps for everyone. I'm leaving that page blank. Issues of the Nations. Here, let's put this one in here. Like that. That's plenty. That's plenty. It's all about postage. I really need another one. Let's see what I have. Let's see if I have something in here. Silhouette. This is about silhouettes and silverware. Ooh. Woven in silk. I'm going to keep that one out. This is all silverware. Hallmarks of British sterling, sterling silverware, swords, silverware, swords, 
swords. Encyclopedia of Collectibles, Silhouettes, Silhouettes, Silk Picture, Silverware, Smoking, Paraphernalia, Spoons, Staffordshire, Stamp, Stein, Stoneware, and Swords. I don't know if I have anything else that could go with the... Yeah. I may or may not use these in another journal. I like to switch things out. So we're going to put this one in here. All right. Am I boring you guys? I'm getting ready for June. So what's going on in chat? Almost all of the time, life series were awesome, weren't they, Deborah? Angie says, Mary, you don't need to stay up late. <laughs> yeah, I love it, Angie. How many hours away is that, Julie says? Well, it's almost 9 o'clock, so if I leave at 10, I've got about an hour. Does that help? <laughs> If you guys need to go to bed, I don't want to keep you up. All right. So we're just going to tear. I guess maybe I should take this out and do this one at a time. Because if I don't tear it off a little, it's going to bulge out. And I like to have something of interest. Like, I started out in January and February with those Natakwa News, community newsletters. And then I used a, um, what else did I use in March? Can't remember what I used in March. I used a um, uh, community newsletter here, uh, county register one that was sewing and then for this month in May I used a did I use something in January I maybe I may not have done anything in January it might have just been February March April May and this month I'm using a Victoria magazine so let's just go through and tear these off a little at the margins. And I'm not saving these margins. I'm going to toss them. Well, maybe I will save them. I can always toss. You can always toss them. And they're about the same height. I don't think I'm going to have to worry too much about the height. But it's fun to have something of interest between your journal pages while you're journaling. Just kind of fun to have them there. So in June, it's going to be postage. And oh, I went and got new postcard stamps. And they have a different design. They went from oh, seashells to barns. And they're really pretty. They're Barnes, the new post postcard stamps. After I get done doing this, we're going to go back to the cover of my Trashinichi and do that wraparound. That'll go here. And see, I do leave some blank pages in there, which makes sense. You know, what I should do is carve some stamps. Carve some stamps in June. Maybe I'll do a, a stamp carving project in June 
and just make stamps, postage stamps. Not every day, maybe one a week or a couple a week. That would be fun, postage stamps. Stamps to go with my stamps in the pages here. And not, I might pull something off like, here's a spaceship, here's, this is all space. I don't know if I would pull any of these off. Do a marigold. Do a hydrangea. Oh, I got a hydrangea stamp. Though. Do a stamp that... And they, they'll they be those Pentel eraser stamps. I'm not going to carve a big, big stamps. Too much. Yep, I think that's what I'll do in June. Do a stamp carving. A postage stamp carving month. And not one every day, just one when I can to go with my June journal. Last year, I tried to carve a stamp for every month, and then I would use it in my ATCs, and I would stamp it around my ATC pages. But this year, I'm trying to get all my ATCs in its own special little book that I haven't worked on for a while. Yeah, I didn't tear that. I don't know if I can get that. There we go. Ooh, I love it that way. That's so colorful. They're not stamps, but they're stamps on the back. I think I'm going to use the, the bookmarks just because I like them. <laughs> and these are more silk. This is more the silk pictures this really isn't stamps here but I like them so they're going in here this is more about silk pieces silk pi silk pictures fabric pictures and they got in with the stamps oh well and then that's the end of that signature. I'm going to like this a lot, I think. Look, that, that bird is sitting on the back of a turtle. Right there. This is, looks like it's in French. No, Republic of Mali, M-A-L-I. That's a Republic of Mali stamp. This is French. This looks like it's Russian. Or Soviet Union. I don't know what this is. It could be Syrian or uh, some Eastern. It's got, looks like Syrian print to there. Rural America with the train. The little train. I hear that train go through town. Yeah. All right, let's put this aside. Let's do these. Yeah, Mary's just chattering away. If you guys are saying something to me, wait till I come out to chat. Because I'm not seeing anything. I'm not seeing what you guys are would be saying to me. All right, this will go here. This is another silk picture. I got some silk picture documentation in here, but that's okay too. It's stamps and silk pictures. <laughs> I guess I pulled them because they were colorful. We're back to stamps. Luxembourg, United Nations, that's a stained glass. Brazil, Canada. China and still bearing the two-headed imperial eagle this stamp was issued in 1917 by the short-lived democratic government that ruled Russia before the commonwealth the communist seized power I didn't know there was any democracy before the in Russia before the communist seized power. 
I don't know my Russian history that well. Oops, it looks like I tore some stamps there. That's okay, though. It'll go this way. Got to be careful on, on all of these. The margins aren't the same. And I'm just tearing it off here so that they'll fit my page better so that I can turn the page without them all sticking out. This is, looks like maybe Liberia, France. Oh, these are all French here. These are all French on this page. So I'm reading a book written by a Madison, Wisconsin author, Jennifer Shaverini, something like that. And it's all about Mary Todd Lincoln and her sisters. And it's quite interesting. Uh, of course, it's a historical novel, so, you know, it isn't, it's not a history book, but it's based on history. And it makes you think what... The president, uh, president wives, the first ladies have to go through when their husbands, and even their family, because they were talking about the death threats that Abraham Lincoln would get. It, even way back then, he was 16th president of the United States, and not everybody, not everybody voted for him. And uh, it's quite interesting. It's a quite interesting novel. And it is a historical novel, so it isn't like, you know, you aren't reading a history book. You're reading a novel. But it makes you, makes you think about what the First Lady and even the families of a president go through and what they have to sacrifice. Like, it was talking about the inaugural train you know, they didn't take a jet plane. They took a train. In fact, they took several trains. And it would stop at different places along the way. And he'd get out and give speeches at different towns. And I imagine that was done by all the presidents at that time. But it was describing the inaugural, the inaugural train, choo-choo train. And I was thinking... You know, we kind of lost that in our in our history. The president, presidents, it's all online stuff now. If you want to know about a president's speech or something, you go and listen to online. It isn't like you go down to the railroad station and hear him give a speech. Well, you probably couldn't get close anyway, but... Quite interesting book, and it's fun reading. I like Jennifer Chavanarini. She started writing the Elm Creek books, quilt, quilt series. And uh, it's I, that's what I've been. That's what I was doing this morning. i was reading that book. Mary Todd Lincoln. And I guess after President Lincoln was assassinated in the 10 years that followed, she went through quite a time where they had had a trial. Her oldest son was worried about her health and sanity. And uh, so they put her in an asylum. Can you imagine that? And then she was estranged for her son, her only living son. That would just be horrible. Her husband had been assassinated and her two younger sons had died. And she was 
mostly by her own choice, estranged from her oldest son who was just trying to take care of her. Very interesting book. And it just makes me think about the sacrifices that were made. I mean, because she came from a well-to-do family. Of course, she wanted to be the wife of a president, you know. And uh, they kind of choose that life. But still, the sacrifices that they make and have made in our history... Just kind of interesting. I always liked reading biographies and historical novels. Um, I want to go back and read. I have read quite a few of uh, Bill O'Reilly's uh, books. That's off here. I'm going to let it be off. Um, he has what he calls the killing books. And I think he did one on killing Lincoln. Um, talking about John Wilkes Booth. And he did one, I think, on MacArthur. Was it MacArthur? In World War II. Um, just very interesting. His, and, of course, now Bill O'Reilly was a history teacher at one time. He's a comment, news commentator now or was a news commentator, and now he has his own news segment on his own channel, but his own uh, site. But, uh, so he he's, takes more of a, it, it's easy reading, it's fun reading, but it's also more factual, probably, because, you know, he's a, he was a history teacher. He takes a little bit different approach than a, historical novel, but it's also easy reading. It's not like reading a textbook, let's put it that way. And I think he did one, did he do one on John Adams? Somebody did a book on John Adams, the second president of the United States, and I never got that one finished. He's done about 10 books. And I, I want to go back and I'd like to go back to the beginning and read all of them. Bill O'Reilly's series. He just put out another one and I forget, I don't know what it is. I, he was talking about it, and, but I'd forgot what it was. He just published a new book, Killing, Killing Something. You call us the Killing Series, but it talks about... Well, like the assassination of John Wilkes, of uh, Abraham Lincoln, John Wilkes Booth. And Jennifer, this Madison author, Jennifer, I know she, she was signing at one of the fiber fairs up there in Madison. I went to it and she was signing autographs and I, I had her sign a, a piece of fabric. This was with, with quilting stuff. And I remember she got out a, she, I just handed her a ballpoint pen and she said, well, that isn't going to work. And she dug into her purse and she got out a better pen and she signed my piece of fabric for me. So I got an autograph by her. All right. Second signature here. This is the, no, I think I'll make this one the first signature and this one the second signature. We'll see. I'm not sure exactly. So that's what I've been reading. Besides the daily papers, about all I get read these days. Um, the Mitford series. I checked out several of the Mitf Mitford series books, but I didn't get them all read by the time I had to take them back. So I'll probably check those out again. Next time I go to the library, I've been doing too much other stuff, like working in the yard and that type of thing. YouTube. Oh, yeah, this is the first, because this is talks about stamps and letters. Could write some letters in here. 
And while I'm doing this, I'll come out, but I'm not watching chat while I'm doing this. I want to get it done. And then I'll have my pages put together for June, and then I'll have to pick a, find a journal cover. I've been using those folders, but I might go for something different this time. I'm not sure what I'm going to use for a cover yet. This is getting in my way here. My my desk is peeling up here. My desktop's falling apart. Let's put a piece of tape under this. It's beginning to bother me. Of course, I didn't get it straight. <laughs> Let's move it in a little. Let's put it on this side. There. Just tape it down a little. In there. Let's see what's going on out in chat. Janice said, Tina, I use the large index cards and glue stuff to both sides. Uh, what are you talking about? Four by six regular postcards is 36 cents. Wow. Yeah, that's probably about the price of them. My postcards are three and a half. I think the smallest you can make postcards are three and a half by five and a half. Uh, approximately that size. They got they go by centimeters, I think, but it's approximately three and a half by five and a half. And when I make my postcards, that's what I measure them out. But a a index card would size would four by six would work too. And in fact, I think what am I doing here? Um, uh, when I send my Christmas postcards, which I got to get out and start working on, or they're not going to be done by Christmas this year again, um, they're photos, four by six photos, and I'm just going to make postcards out of them. They're strong enough to be a postcard. I love these. I love all these old portrait style stamps. And then we go into the first day of issue covers here. We used to collect those when I was a kid. We had a post office every time they had a first day of issue they'd send us. We were on the list to get one from the post office. I probably have them in my collection someplace up in Wisconsin. <laughs> someplace up in Wisconsin. I'm just about done here. Just about done. And these aren't postcards, but I like how colorful these are. These are the more of those silk pieces. And the post office used to publish a publication of the stamps, but they quit doing that. It costs too much money. Or if they do it, they don't offer it to the public. You might be able to order a catalog. I thought I got on a list, but I got one and that was it. I think this is the last one. So I think for June, 
I think I'll do some stamp carving in June. Not and make postage stamps and carve them. But how many will just be variable depending on what I get done. I might get one done. I might get three done. I might get ten done. But I probably won't get thirty done. I think that's the last page. So there are the pages for my June art journal. Now I have to do the cover and bind it in. And I'll have my June journal done. And I love having interest pages in between my journal pages. I love that. And these, I could do a Happy Mail stamp. These are very much mail related, except for the mail, M-A-I-L. Except for the silk pieces. There we go. Alrighty. Woohoo! Let me come out and see what's happening in chat. And it's 9.19. I'm making good time. Somebody said good night. Clint says, yeah, I want to get rid of my totes. It's nice to get organized, Lori. Hi, Lori loves Montana. You still get their catalog? Why did I only get one? Did my postmaster hide it from me? I'm going to sign up for my... Again, Anne, if you're still getting the catalogs, I want those catalogs. I'm going to sign up for them again. I signed up online, and I got one, and that, that's all I got. And I think that the post office doesn't put it in my box. I'm going to have to talk to my post lady. I'm missing a postcard, too. <laughs> that's a whole other story. Clint said... I'm good, Lori, just getting ready to redo my closet. Clint and Lori are saying hello. Killing the mob. Is that what it... Oh, yeah, Deborah. Deborah Brown. Yeah, killing the mob. That's right. All about um, the mob. And I don't know if the mob's totally killed yet. <laughs> Lori... Uh, Loves Montana says she enjoys Bill O'Reilly. I do too. What is what is it he says? Snarky? Is it snarky? Is that word he does he use that word snarky a lot? What does he word say? Oh I'm not thinking well tonight. He says some words. Some word. I think it's snarky. You guys can correct me. Uh what does he say? It's not stark. Hi, Lori. Let's see. They are beautiful. Clint, it's nice to get organized. Hi, Clint. Clint says he's still here. Tina says, and Janet, it's nice to know the size limit. They're talking about postcards. Allie says, see my post at 850. 850. What did Allie say at 850? Allie says, just found out you can check out the free digital version of magazines from the library. Yeah, you can. Yes, you can. And I love, that's why I got a, what they call here in Nebraska, they call it the Nebraska card. And like, I'm in a rural area and our county library doesn't have a, a access to the digital, uh, like the e-readers and stuff like that, where you can go online and check out stuff but the library in the county next to us where we go to town where we go shopping is a bigger library and if you get a Nebraska card you have to buy a library card at your county library uh, well if you're out of town let's put it that way and I'm out of town so I pay for a library card but I don't have to pay for the Nebraska card you just have to prove that you have, I don't think I paid for the Nebraska card. You just have to prove that you've already paid your library for your library card at your library, or you have to have a library card. 
And then you can get the Nebraska card and you can use that at all the libraries in Nebraska. And that Nebraska, the library in the larger library has uh, online magazines. But they don't carry the Stampington. They did, they uh, used to carry that um, cloth paper scissors. But I don't think that's being published anymore. Uh, I used to read that online. Down here in Nebraska. I used to buy it at the bookstore. Now I get the art journaling Stampington. But I don't get the others online. But you can read like the Better Homes and Garden. And Real Simple. And, and some of the women's magazines. The Reader's Digest. That Prevention Magazine. There's a lot that you can do at your local library. Plus, what I love about our little library is they they have nice subscriptions to magazines and they'll clean them out uh, once or twice a year and people will donate magazines. You know, they've had enough of them. <laughs> you know, magazines stack up and, you know, I, I go and read the free library table at our local library and that's how I get a lot of my fussy cut stuff. Uh, good, good point, Allie Kay. Thanks for talking about that. Yeah, if you go to your library, check out the online, um, because, you know, why pay? Well, you want to pay for a subscription if you really like the magazine, because that helps the magazine publisher. But if you can read it online, you know, like you can't order 20 magazines you can't subscribe to, well maybe some of you could but i couldn't subscribe to 20 magazines subscribe to the magazines that you really like and enjoy and then you can go read the others online one hour and 45 minutes until 10 30 p.m mary's time is when she thought she would be done i'll probably i'll probably quit around 10 uh, I want. I have more. One. One more thing I want to do tonight, and that's put the wrap around on that trashinichi. Ali K said she'd grow wisdom if she could in her garden. We're back up to the garden, and we're back up to where Ali K said the squirrels in our neighborhood like to plant corn in our garden. <laughs> Ann says I never have had to pay for a library card. Well. But you're probably at your local library. I'm out of town. We have a little town library here in this town, and I don't have to pay for that card. But the county library where I go, I have to pay for an out-of-town card. So you're probably getting your library card locally. I don't have to pay for the library card here in our little town. Yeah, Julie says cloth, paper, scissors is not published anymore. I used to really love that magazine. I used to uh, go read them online. I was on their mailing list, but boy, they would spam you. I'd get three or four emails from cloth, paper, scissors every day. <laughs> uh, um, now, Stampington, I'm on their email list, but they don't spam you the same way. You get when they get a new issue or they'll, they have, um, uh, they send little projects like, you know, little ideas, quotes, stuff like that via, if you sign up for their newsletter. I, I like Stampington a lot. If I could afford it, I'd sign up for three or four, but they're, I just get the art journaling magazine because that's about all I can afford. Their magazines are a little more expensive. I treat them like books, but I can't afford four or five Stampington issues. Now you can go and buy their back issues if you, if you can get there before everybody else does for a little cheaper, but let me plug you guys back in. Yeah, Stampington, Stampington is a good art magazine. I miss it too, Julie. I do too. Let's see if, if this is dried. I think it probably has. Yeah. This is dried enough to put in my Trashinichi. Oh, and I kind of like, I kind of like those blots on there now. I kind of looks like a cloudy day, doesn't it? 
it looks like a, a puffy white clouds. Looks like a cloudy sky. I kind of like that. So where's my trash and Ichi? What did I do with the trash and Ichi? Here it is. So I'm going to put this as a wrap around in here. And I want to save this and this, so I think I'm going to do it like this. I think I'm going to put it right in here, like this, and see, it'll wrap around. Now, I'll probably have to cut a little of it off, but I'll use it as some, or, or I can just make a pocket, couldn't I? That's what we'll do, we'll make a pocket. Or, let's see, yeah, let's put it, okay. I'm going to put my tape on this side. And I'm just going to use double-sided tape. This is a trash Nietzsche, by the way. <laughs> it doesn't have to be perfect. And we'll just taper down good here. Do you guys, have you heard from Tanya? I kind of lost track of Tanya after she, after she left Omaha. Do you know where she is in her travels? Is she in Tennessee? I lost track of Tanya. I thought I saw her on with Lisa. Was she on with Lisa last week? I lost track of everybody last week. That yard work did me in. That yard work did me in, and I got more coming up next week. But once the planting is done, then it's just a matter of watering it and taking care of it. The hard part's about three-fourths done. I still have the plant on the south side of our house. And I have some more things I want to put under the walnut tree. And I have some pots to fill on the front porch. And I'm just using double-sided tape to put this in. I'm not being... This is a trash Nietzsche. This isn't a... I'm not going to worry too much about it. And so it's going to go in like, it's going to go in like this. Right in there. And I have to move it up a little so that I don't have to cut it off. And then I'll make a pocket out of what's the overhang. What doesn't wrap around. What's too long to wrap around. So I'm going to pull all of these tapes off. Because I want to save this and I want to save this. You haven't heard, Lori, where Tanya is? Janice said, I had to duck out and post about the new stamps available tomorrow. Oh, really? Heritage breeds. Are they dogs? Colleen Scrap Chick will want them, I'm sure. Oh, are heritage breeds, are you talking about dogs? The new postage stamps? Amina says, I don't know what state Tanya's in, but there are dinosaur bones there. <laughs> We're talking about Tanya. Lori says, I've been worrying about our friend Nashua. She hasn't been at any of the streams for weeks and weeks. Oh, really? Farm animals. They must be doing rural America at the post office because their postcards are barns. Their postcards are barns. Uh-oh, did I put my tape over this? 
I don't know if I'll be able to get this one out. Let's pull it completely off. I might have to redo this. Uh, did that one wrong. Let's see if I can cut that off. Tanya, I saw the dinosaurs in the other one, Julie says. She's been all over. <laughs> Maybe she's here in Montana, Lori says. We have dinosaur bones. We had some in Nebraska, too. But I, I think she's out of Nebraska. Could be Illinois or Indiana or Tennessee. Well, I don't know if there'd be dinosaur bones in Tennessee. There might be. They're all over the place. <laughs> Those dinosaurs got around. Maybe she, oh, let's see. Janice said, yes, all the ancient sea basin between the Rockins, Rockies and the Mississippi River. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like when I lived in Madison, um, there was that one, I can't remember the name of it now. I'd have to go look. But um, not dinosaurs so much as big woolly mammoths and stuff like that. They were documenting in that park where I would go. I love to go to that little neighborhood park. I can't remember the name of it now. But they would talk about all the ancient animals that roamed. And, and you would almost feel like one, you know, they'd have big old signs, information. You almost feel like one was going to creep up on you. All right, we're going to try to get this as even as I can in here, right in, maybe up a little, Mary, ah, one and done, one and done, pretty good, that's pretty good, and then it will wrap around like this, and I think I'll make a pocket here, and, well, it, maybe it'll just be a little tuck. Maybe it'll be a little tuck. And there will be my wraparound for my trash and ichi. And see, the reason I did a wraparound is because my pages stuck way outside of my cover here. And I didn't want to cut it all off. And I was talking about what I could put there. And Dee Dee says, Mary, I'll send you some wood-grained peel and stick wallpaper <laughs> so that's what I have except I put it crossway no did I put it no I put it up and down I put it up and down like I should have it's right and I don't know if I want to seal this yet because it might grow fatter as I work in it and I want the now I just need a closure to it I need a closure, but before I do the closure, what time is it? It's 9.37. Let's put this like this. I want to put some more, uh, some more recipe pages. Because this is going to be a recipe, recipe book. And so we're going to collage recipes on the blank sides. I might leave Fayetteville, Arkansas, but I'll put something here, maybe one of those little content pages here, there. So on the blank sides, I'm going to put recipes, and that'll be kind of my journaling in here. And I'll leave, I'll leave the interest pieces. So... And I don't think I will, I don't know if I want to use tape or collage. collage. Collage is easy, but tape is less messy. Well, let's just go and pull some recipes. Let's disassemble this book. 
And we'll set this aside for now. Let's see, I think I had this as a closer. And let's just take this book apart because I'll be keeping, I might put a few pictures in there. So for the rest of this stream, I'm just going to decide what I want to use here. I'm going to disassemble this book. Look at that. Isn't that cool? And I might, I might credit the book here. I might credit the book in my journal so that I know what, where it came from. All these recipes. I love these old pictures. And she's got poetry from the Raggedy Man on children. Children, take them as they run. You can bet on everyone. Treat them right and recognize human souls is all one size. Never think the world's best men wears the same souls they had when they ran barefoot way back where all those little children air. James Whitcomb Riley, famous American poet. Take them, take them as they run. You can bet on everyone, treat them right, and recognize human souls is all one size. I like that. Human souls is all one size. Just because you're a small human soul doesn't, doesn't mean you aren't the same size as an adult, is what he's saying. And I love how she does her chapters in script. I love that. And I have some that I used. And I think I'm going to have to tear this off here. Let's put these there. I don't, I think I'm going to have to get my pliers out. And rip away here. Yeah, I'm only going to stay on till 10 o'clock tonight. From 6 till 10, that's four hours of stream. That's enough. Angie says, yes, Mary, you don't have to stay up all night. And he says, good, go get some sleep. I probably won't go to sleep, though. I'll probably do some other things. It won't be art journaling, but I never go right to sleep after I start my, stop streaming. I'm all keyed up. I'm all keyed up. This isn't going to come up hard until I tear some more pages out. So this is kind of book kind of has a vintage flavor to it with the vintage drawings. The home at peace drifting on the river of time. A little story from mother. Words cannot tell what this old heart would say of her. Mother, the sweetest and fairest of all. Edgar Guest. Another he was an American poet. And here we're back to the front again. So let's put this over here. I got these all mixed up. The pages all mixed up while I was looking for these. Four, five, six, seven... Let's just start with page 19. Let's put those over here for now. You're tearing up my book! I'm glad she's not around to watch me destroy this book. I'm not destroying it, I'm using it. I'm putting it to good use in my art journal. A simple old-fashioned lemon sauce. A half a cup of sugar, one tablespoon of cornstarch, one half teaspoon of salt, one cup of boiling water. I got all of that. Two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of lemon juice, a grated rind of one lemon. I bought two lemons the other day and an egg yolk. I got all that. Um... Pour, after you cook it, 
you remove, remove it from the heat and cool it. That would taste good on blueberry muffins, wouldn't it? I was going to make blueberry muffins tomorrow. Maybe I'll make some lemon sauce to go on top. Yum. That sounds good. And my brother, who doesn't like lemon but loves blueberry muffins, can have his with butter. <laughs> Seetha Jane's Muffins for Babies. Flour, baking powder, baking soda, salt, sugar, egg, milk. This recipe is very simple. Delicious muffins contain little sugar or fat, both of which Grandma thought were indigestible for her younger children. So... A fat-free muffin for babies. Now I lay me down to sleep, just saying her prayers. A lot of lemon recipes. Cloud light lemon sponge pudding. Mm. Dried peach nuggets. That sounds good. Aunt Fanny's Arkansas black apple cookies. Inger's Norwegian Kringle. Sour cream, sugar, hot water, cocoa, flour, salt, and baking soda. Kringles, probably think it's a cookie. Spirit of the home. Old-fashioned country mothers. Oh, we're on page 30. I must have skipped some in here. Let's see. Let's go back to page 26, 27, 15, 16, 17, 18. Now I want to come over here. 19, 20. That looks like the front. This is more front stuff. Front matter contents and these I tore oh and now we're on page 133 <laughs> 133 80 oh, I really mixed it up these go with the that I don't know where these go 2021. Okay, this is all front matter stuff. And this goes in the back. So 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. I'm putting this back, look back together. 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. I'm, I'm back on track. 38, 39. I'll probably just get this book disassembled. Deconstructed, Rosemary would say. She's deconstructing a recipe book. 41. This is really an interesting book, though. I'm, I'm glad I got my hands on this. 44. I don't know what happened to 45. I must have cut it up. Because that's where I... Some of these pages I removed. And put them on that wrap around. Daisy's nutmeg cake with lemon cream cheese frosting. Lemon cream cheese frosting. Six ounces of cream, cream cheese softened at room temperature. A half teaspoon of one and one half teaspoons of lemon juice. Grated lemon pool, pool peel. Four cups of sh powdered sugar. Mmm. Sounds good, but it does need to go on a cake of some sort. Boiled chicken, Easter salad, tomato aspic, sorghum dipped southern fried chicken.
Now, not all of these recipes will go in that book. I'm just going to put recipes on the back of those pages. Chicken in the oven, chicken in the pot. Easy over oven fried chicken, pan gravy, Aunt Clara's chicken gruel, Aunt Clara's boiled hen with Dutch gum. I don't care for chicken. Sorry. All right. It would go from 76 to 95. There's 81. 92, 81. I must have, this must have been where I tore out those pages. I'm missing four pages, four or five pages, but that's okay. They're in my on my wraparound. Oops. Oh, this is the one where I where I got vicious with it. Kindness is such a very simple thing. Yes. Is there there is in life this golden chance, wisdom gently spoken. Mother stewed veal rump with vegetables. Tiny timber, rich, rich butter. Am I making you guys hungry? Homemade butter. Shows how to shake a jar of cream until it turns to butter. <laughs> Melt in your mouth chocolate cookies. Yeah, I got pretty rough with this one. Whoops. Maybe if I tear it from the other side. Tear it from this side. Tear it down instead of... No, it's gonna... I, I ripped this book out of the... And I tore a section there. Simple things in common folk. I'm about through that mess. Aunt Mabel's brown stew. Sounds good. Old fashioned collops. I don't know what a collop is. Looks like a turnip or an onion or something. Steak, water, butter, flour. Carrots. It looks like a carrot, maybe. Oh. The Lesters, our grandmother's people, were early day pioneers in southern Missouri and, like other settlers, had drifted in through the hills of Kentucky, Tennessee, and Virginia. As of the late 30s, we still use Elizabethan words inherited from those descendants of the first English settlers, words like woods coat. A child born out of wedlock was a woods coat, C-O-L-T. Dauncey, as in I feel a might Dauncey faint, and collops. Collops is a dish like bacon and eggs, something cooked over coal or a piece of anything, especially meat. I didn't know what a collop was. So it's an old Elizabethan word. Old time Mother's Day picnic. Yeah. Good thing I'm tearing this book apart because I really butchered that. I thought I was about through it, but I think I... It goes this whole section. Out fishing. I'll have to show this picture to my brother. This looks like my brother fishing. He just looks like him. Only my brother doesn't smoke a pipe. My brother smokes Marlboro 100s. Shame on him. I am not going to stop his smoking habit at this age of his life. He's going to smoke till the day he dies. It's 
not going to listen to me. Mother's Day. Tale of a brooch. Yeah. Easy to make star cookies. Young Elizabeth's fruit and nut chocolate ice book ice box cookies. Nellie's first cupcakes. Knee deep in June. I'm just about through this. The smile of cheer and the voice of love. Last page. All right. Now the rest should be easy. I'm deconstructing this book. I got six minutes to finish it. Rose Blossom Tea. Ooh, that sounds good. Dried Rose Buds. Rose Petal Vinegar. A good girl as a parent ever found. As good a girl as a parent ever found. An old-fashioned one, two, three, four cake with lemon frosting and whipped snow frosting. Very light meringues with slivered almond. Little brownies, macaroons. A lot of poetry and stories. That's what I like about this book. I really like this, how this book was put together. Except I'm taking it all apart. Extra special rhubarb pie. We got rhubarb growing out in the yard. Extra special rhubarb pie. Double crust recipe follows. Five cups of rhubarb. I'll bet you double crust pastry. Have to save that one. Muffins. Simple old time cherry pie. Cherries are expensive if you. Oh my goodness. Have to go pick them yourself. Lemon icing, liberty, childhood, past once more, so dear. Baked chicken, Effie's baked chicken, and Irene's steamed brook trout, light green cold slaw, We're going to a picnic, lemon clover leaf rolls, a lot of lemon recipes in this book. A lot of lemon recipes. Whipped cream mayonnaise. Whipped cream mayonnaise. Heavy cream, powdered sugar, half cup of mayonnaise, watermelon juice, pinch of salt, and a dash of paprika. <laughs> Whipped cream mayonnaise. Lemon mayonnaise dressing. The mulberry tree. Mulberry crunch with oatmeal topping. Circus Day Parade, Summer Squash Medley, Chicken and Ramekins, Ada's Macaroni Salad. Am I making you guys hungry? Pineapple filling. I'm deconstructing this book. Ooh, I like this picture. That's pretty cool. Nana's Chocolate Pound Cake. I wonder if I can get this pulled off now. No. Sometimes I can pull this binding off, but this is on here pretty good. New England goodies. Raspberry crowdy cream. Cookie crust tart shells. Crunch up your cookies and mix them up with butter. Cookie crumbs. Raspberry vinegar. Are you making you hungry? I'm getting hungry just reading these. Crispy biscuit dough, mushroom sauce, peach melba, billy goat gruff cookies. <laughs> oh dear. Old fashioned coffee cake. That sounds good. I haven't made a coffee cake in a long time. Coffee cake really does sound good. Seven minute frosting. 
venison roast with vegetables. I wonder if I can pull that off with my pliers. Sometimes if I get a hold of it with my pliers, easier to tear when you get all this gunk off of it and this has that little piece on the bottom again and I'll save that Venison pot roast with vegetables, mock oysters, apple dumplings, syrup, toasted English walnuts. Glaze, noodle ring. Slivered almonds and dried uppercut nut bread, brandy sauce from out of the open hand of Providence. Raisin nut sauce, toasted pecans, cornmeal egg bread. I just like reading the names of these recipes. Down home beaten buff biscuits, Grandma Meekin's mashed potato salad. Meringue, lemon pie. There's a lemon. Oh, that's a poem about lemon pie. Graham cracker crumb toffee. Effie's favorite coconut cookies. Not all these recipes will go in that trash and itchy. But I'll pick out some that I enjoy. And I think I'll probably put some of the pictures in there. Grandma's Christmas cake. And here's the index. We're going to leave the index intact. There we go. What time is it? 10.01. 10.01. I'm not bad. Let's come out and say goodnight. Mina says, lemon raspberry rhubarb pies, coffee cake and cookies. I want dessert. Dennis said, I've heard of Billy Goat Gruff Cookies. I think they have granola in them. What page were they on? Let's see what they... Let's see what the rest... Let's look it up in the index. Billy Goat Gruff Cookies. Let's see what it says for Billy Goat Gruff Cookies. Beverages. Page 207. Let's go see what the ingredients are. Page 207, 254, 232, 214. What was it? 207. Billy Goat Gruff Cookies. Once upon a time, three billy goats lived in a stony field near a bridge that stretched across the little river. There was great billy Great Big Billy Goat Gruff, Big Billy Goat Gruff, and Little Billy Goat Gruff. That's it. Three cups of flour, four teaspoons of nutmeg, cup of cold butter or margarine, one and a half cups of brown sugar, firmly packed, uh, half teaspoon of vanilla, three eggs, and about a half cup of powdered sugar. Just sounds like a regular cookie, doesn't it? Just with nutmeg in it. It has flour, butter, nutmeg, brown sugar, vanilla, egg, three eggs, and powdered sugar. Combine vanilla and eggs and stir in dry ingredients, blending to form a ball of dough. Turn out on a lightly floured surface and roll to an eighth of inch thick. Janice... Uh, 
somebody probably got creative and put granola in yours. Sounds like it needs something more. Bake until light tan around the edges, 10 to 12 minutes. Watch baking time carefully as these cookies are topped with sugar. It doesn't say to top. Oh, sprinkle of powdered sugar. And then cut with a donut cutter. Lay cookies on a baking sheet. As each batch is done, remove from the oven. Transfer immediately to brown paper or wire, wire wrap to cool. I would put granola in mine too, Janice. It sounds like they need like coconut and granola and nuts. And that's what I would put in a Billy Goldcruff cookie. All right. So... I'm going to choose, not tonight, but I'll be choosing recipes to go into here. And we did our Trashinichi wraparound tonight. We did the Trashinichi wraparound with the wood grain paper that Dee Dee sent and recipes from that book. We just deconstructed our book. I put together my June journal pages here. And I did the, I don't know what I did with it, the little doodle. We did marigold doodles. What did I do? Oh, we did the Snow White. Snow White. Uh, Rolodex card. I'll get it out and set it on top. We did the little Snow White Rolodex card. And where's my little doodle journal? I'm looking for it. It's here someplace. Well, I'm not going to look for it forever. If I can't put my hands on it, it won't go on the thumbnail. Things tend to get mixed up. Do, 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 do. Where did I put it? I don't see it. I put it someplace safe. I put it someplace safe. Here it is. I painted the I painted the cover. That's why it was put someplace safe. I painted the cover. The front and back. We did the marigold. I'm going to have to hunt out my little list of borders. We did the marigold borders. Because I planted marigold yesterday. So that's what I did tonight. Woo! I'm tired. <laughs> let's see. I think I'll open this up to the... Let's put the wood grain out on top like that. And let's put this like this. And put snow white there. And we don't need the whole Rolodex on there. But I do need something under this to spool a thread in there. Too much. Too much. I just need something to keep it from there. And we'll put it just just like. <laughs> rolling out I'm setting up my thumbnail and I deconstructed the cookbook and I really let me show you guys that again I really do like the cover of this book after I took up the cover off the book jacket off. Isn't that neat? I'm going to make a journal out of that. And I have the cover here someplace. I don't know what I did with the cover to it. It's Country Woman's Cookbook. I threw it off someplace. It'll be 10 minutes before Mary gets off here. <laughs> Let's say good night to everybody. Nina says, I thought for sure they'd have oats. Yeah, they sound like they need some something more roughage, don't they, Mina? 
sounds like plain cookie dough, doesn't it? It needs some of those stones. <laughs> it does. It does. It needs some granola and oats and nuts and, and coconut. Mary, what if you used a ruler on that section? Oh, that would have worked, wouldn't have it? See, Mina, I don't read the chat while I'm doing stuff, but that would have... You, you mean when I tore those pages apart, a ruler would have really helped me get past that torn part. Too late. I saw it too late, Mina. It would have worked good. Let me put my pliers away so I can find them if I need them. Let's see, what else? Our parents were careful to keep kids out of the souvenir shops. <laughs> Mina says, Colossal Cave Mountain Park for us. We would go early and see the vultures roast, ro roosting in the trees with their wings spread to warm the morning sun. Oh, cool. We're talking about Tanya's trip. Janice said, we mostly did Sunday drives to Skyland Drive for picnics and stuff. Cheap fun. Yeah. My parents would uh, talk about cheap fun, Janice. That reminds me of when I was younger. We would go on a lot of Sunday drives. And we'd always go, we lived in a small town, not too far from the Little Blue River. And at that time, the rivers were clean enough that we could go swimming in the river. And we'd always beg our mom and dad to take us down to the river. Let's go down to the river and go swimming. Let's have a weenie roast. And we'd go on Sunday drives, mostly country drives. Mina said, the Griffin Park Observatory was another sweet memory. My dad was re really big on astronomy. Mina said, there was a huge Tyrannosaurus Rex at the inside entrance. And Lori said, that was in Colorado, Julie. Um, talking about Tanya's trip. Because I said, where's Tanya? Where in the world is Tanya McGuire? <laughs> and her husband, Jeff, where'd they drive that big RV off to now? Janice says, all over the ancient sea basin between the Rockies and the Mississippi River. We're talking about dinosaur bones. Okay, well... Tomorrow starts a brand new week. Dee Dee will be streaming at 8.30 Eastern, 7.30 Central. And uh, our list assignment is due. She gives us the assignment on Wednesday, and it's due the following Monday. Well, she gave the assignment on Monday, and it was due the following Monday, and Mary's not done with it. So I think I'm going to go work on my Society of Idea Collector before I go to bed so I can have my list at least started. But we did a list tonight. That's the other thing we did tonight. We did a list of what we plant in our garden. So we did our listing good tonight. <laughs> so y'all have a good week. Um, Dee Dee's on at, at 8.30. Janet Nash comes on about 9 Eastern. Janet Young comes on around 12, is it, Central? 1 Eastern, is that how that goes? And I don't know who's on in the afternoon, but there'll be somebody on. And then later in the evening, uh, Lisa McMectic Life is on. <sighs> and I will be back on Tuesday morning at 4.30 a.m. So it's been fun. Have a great week. And I'll see you Tuesday morning. Thanks for hanging out with me. Bye. Lisa said she may not be on tomorrow, Julie says. Oh, okay. All right. Well, Lisa may not be on tomorrow night. So somebody will come on. Sometimes uh, Jersey, Jersey Crafter hops on like I wasn't on last Thursday morning and she hopped on. So I'm not saying she will, but if somebody doesn't come on, somebody else usually pops in. Let's see. Janice said, yes, Tanya's trip and Janet and Roy's dolls had me thinking of 
was that Thea Stanley trying to figure a way to do a group? I don't know what that is. Is that I I can't read the print's too small for me, Janet. Uh, Janice. Okay, bye everybody. I will see you Tuesday morning. Go gold or go home. Oh, Flat Stanley. Flat Stanley. Thank you. I'm reading off of my phone up above, so I just got a little screen and the text shows up over there. So it, it helped when you put that in caps. Bye.